Now. I'm going to have to mute this. Good morning everybody, welcome to the Flory Models live show. Here we are with you Saturday morning, bright and early on the 2nd of March. Look at everyone smiling and being happy. Hello everyone. <laughs> Literally, you you joined us as we were quickly doing something off screen. Literally. <laughs> Why do we always do that with one minute to go? Could you quickly do... Yeah, we all no, get past this. I've still not finished what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, well, you can carry on Andy, keep tapping away, it's fine. I'm so, tapping yes. away. <laughs> anyway, trust you're all doing very well and your week has gone well. You can kick back and relax now for a couple of hours with us as we do a little bit of modelling, topical debate, chatting, ranting. I don't know really, I haven't got a rant at the moment. I need one. Can't think of any off the top I'm of my head. I'm sure somebody will come up. I'm sure somebody will get me going in a different <laughs> yeah, way. Yeah. So, uh, but yes, anyway, good morning to all the Flory family over in the Flory chat room. I see you all piling in now, dead on 10 o'clock. It's like a school class. Come on, everyone, yeah, get in. Yeah. Crikey. We're going to lock the doors. <coughs> Sorry, I'm dying on a croissant. Uh, yes, and hello to everybody in, Flor in the uh, Flory YouTube channel chat as well. Hey. Sorry. Have you got the sign on that says live that lights up on the door? Oh, you need yeah. that. Get that in there. She was just saying she got the notification. Oh, right. Okay. What, from my one? Yeah. Oh, so it is working. There you yeah, go. But... It's all working. Good o. So we're just learning how to use, uh, was it, uh, Facebook? Yeah, so. Meta. Is it Meta? meta? Sorry, it's Whatever Meta now, isn't it? Bloody yeah, it's now. X and Meta and everything else, isn't know. it? Whatever so. you change the name to, yeah. yeah, yeah. Whatever they are this week. <laughs> Whatever it is, Fair yeah. enough. <laughs> but yes, hello to obviously in the YouTube chat as well. We've got you up as live as well. Some of you put questions in there already. Just as we start, remember, it moves very quickly and I can't go back. So uh, if I don't read out a question, please just keep answering it. I will spot it. Uh, Nathan's not here. He normally does a special thing to be able to look at it, but I don't have that. It's all smoke and mirrors. So uh, but He's yes. the spotter, isn't he? He is. He's the spotter for questions and that. Plus, I can't see anything. I haven't got my glasses on. So anyway, very good. So anyway, trust you're all doing well. As I say, we've got a couple of things uh, going on for you to help you along with your day. So if we start with that one. So PM Models has got a bit of a special, which Andy's busy sort of adding to as we speak. All right, so basically it's 10% extra off all marked kits. Don't forget, all the kits on the site are roughly around about 12 to 15% discounted already, and you get a further 10%. So you're going to be getting a discount of up to 25% uh, on various kits down in here as well. Plus the fact we've got extra savings on some specials that we've got up at the moment with you as well. So we've got the Apache, which I'm building that. That's my next big build coming up. So uh, if you want to join me with that particular video build, as I'll be making my way through that particular beastie, you can join in with that one. We've got that gorgeous P47. And also we've put up to commemorate me finishing off this particular kit this week. Uh, we've got three different versions of the Tiger Moth up with you as well. So uh, do you know what? That one there, I'm pretty sure you get the markings for that in that box. All right, okay. Wasn't that the second choice of the markings? Hold on, let me just double check this. Number 42. Yeah, you do. That's random, okay. But anyway, you get a different one over here as well, because this one comes with bombs. So yes, it's a Tiger Moth Vermeer. Very nice. I bet that was effective. That's a I could, well, yeah. <laughs> I bet it went up a bit when it dropped that lot. So it suddenly <laughs> the speed goes through the roof. <laughs> uh, but Proper actually, ground attack. Yeah, definitely. Mind you, you just shoot holes all the way through it. As long as you don't hit anything important, you're okay. Yeah. So, totally. uh, but anyway, really striking markings as well with the yellow. Um, yeah. you know and obviously with the camo on the top and everything else something a little bit different about that one which is very very nice so we got that one down in there and obviously this is the kit that i've just completed as well so uh, i'll show you that in a moment so highly highly recommend that kit i've had a lot of fun building that one plus the fact all the ones we spoke about on yesterday's show so we got the leftover of the hasagawa that we got left uh obviously this one we spoke about in the show which is the second one which i built with the um and, I, uh, and sounds yes just put out with the hasagawa 
They're yeah. on a special offer, but they're only 15% and not the extra 10 on them because obviously we had them as a pre-order and it's a bit unfair for everybody. You know, it's just what's left over actually from yeah, that second order to come in. So they're only discounted 15%, even though they're in the special offer bit, which sounds a bit odd, I know, but just bear with it. Yeah. <laughs> but everything yeah. else, all the other stuff 12, actually 12, is... 12%. 12%. 12%. There you my go. apologies, 12%. 12%. Can't do my maths. But all yes. the other kits, Andy will explain he did it. Andy, you explain you did it because I'll just cock it up as usual. <laughs> yeah, we don't yeah. know what we're doing. We just I have no idea. About I've got no clue what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, yeah, all, all, all kits on the um, forum, or on, on the forum, on the site, are obviously already marked down. But there's an yes. extra 10% off all kits apart from the. I'm, sorry, I'm watching Phil Sweden and trying to look at it. Um, apart from the um, sale car section, which is the first section on the on the thing, and also the Hasegawa, that's it, all in um, special offers there as as they are priced already. Yeah. Um, there you go. Yeah, everything else. It works got, out actually. when you get into checkout. It does it all for you. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so that, fir- that first row of kits that's on the top row there. They will have mm-hmm. an extra ten percent off, and the obviously the other tiger moth would have ten would have an extra ten percent off the already marked down price. Mm-hmm. Nice. In fact, uh, I think you've got a bit more because I did the maths. I think I've got, I've, I've been a bit generous, shall we say? <laughs> we're on this, so. Did you put codes in them? Uh, no, I've just done them as a price. Uh, what? Well, as well. Oh no! Now you've ruined his his thing. Now his mojo building and everything. You've sort of screwed up Andy's system. So will oh, they get another, so they have you done them so they'll get another ten percent off? No, I've done them as a price. That's the oh, price. Oh, so, right. So every, everything in special offers then. Is, yeah, yeah, it's the price. Off. There's no extra. Te- that's yeah, it. No extra, right. So that's it. It's what the price off. you pay is what you see. Yeah. Yes. There you go. I think we'd know what we're doing by now, really. I know. We've been doing this a while now. Also, anyway. over on the Flory Model site, um, obviously we've got the new <laughs> EU store as well. So don't worry about that one if you're inside the EU. But also we've got up here. I put on sale. We've got the polo shirts. So they're normally £16 or plus that. Now they're just 15 And now we've got the T-shirts at a tenner. We've got the aprons at just £11.50 plus that. This is, guys, if you're in the UK. We've got the hoodies at just 33 And also we've got the mugs now. I've dropped the price of the mugs because, to be honest, I've got hundreds of them. So, um, but anyway, you've got those ones there, just seven ninety nine plus that, which I don't know is nine pound something, fifty eight or something, uh, down in there as well. So, if you want to get a little bit of merch at a discount, all the rest of it, treat yourself to a nice mug, something like that, you can do as well. Plus, the fact we've got all the pigments and all your washes are all back in stock because I was doing pigments yesterday. So, um, but yes, they're all on there as well. And don't forget, you can pop over to uh, Proveco, and they're acting as our sort of shipping agent at the moment for the flory model stuff as well so you can buy direct from them just pop in click in the washes and you can go in and get all your stuff from there and be sent uh, by the lovely kareen or get that out to you next day so uh, very very nice to you as well so good job. Also, so if you want anything from rebeco you can get it just there and also say there's 10 percent off books as well oh right okay there you go last very, minute very nice. com. <laughs> last minute is it is it done now i didn't want to go over to books so hey. over to books on the pm store there we go very nice. 10% off them as well. 10% off all books. And no well. VAT. There you go. No VAT on books. No VAT on, on no. books. Unless you're in the EU, then there's VAT. It's weird. Oh, yeah. Don't ask. No, if you're in the UK, well, we can't send to the EU anyway, unfortunately. So if you're in the UK, <laughs> there you go. Yes. No VAT. Happy days. Definitely. Cool. Very nice. Very, very nice. Anyway, trust you're all doing very well. And everyone say it's had a good week and uh, relaxing and say the weather here last night was truly absolutely awful and we woke up this morning to a dusting of snow over the moors we have the moors right here and it's all white this morning but coming back last night driving back from cornwall it was horrendous biblical it was sleet torrential rain everything was flooded it was horrible but uh, very nice good job we've had rain and damp and miserable to be honest yesterday it hailed it rained it just this was what four o'clock yesterday afternoon Mm-hmm. It went absolutely just pitch black and just, yeah, it wasn't very nice. So, um, they, yeah. said, they said we might get some wintry precipitation over the over the evening, but we didn't. Mm. We did. Not that I saw anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is uh, the Tiger Moth, which we got finished off last week, which is all done. Don't forget, it's up on the site right now. You can go off and have a look at the final photos and the bits and pieces like that is done. And that is the kit that we've got up on special. And again, like I've been saying all week, if you're not into World War One biplane, stringy things, all the rest of it, highly recommend it. It's not a complicated kit and it goes together 
really very, very nicely indeed. So uh, if you want to have a look at that particular kit, uh, you can do, just pop over to the store. I'll just show you in here if you want to get a better idea of what it looks like. Click on to video builds and then literally click on to Tiger Moth. And then down in here, all the build stuff is down in here. Members obviously can go through and all the photos are down in here as well. So if you want to click on and go through the high res photos. That's good. Hello. Technical I'm services. Stop it from going. <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to sell you another driveway, are they? So anyway. <laughs> some, wi some windows. <laughs> some windows. Windows and a conservatory needs. A conservatory for his third floor fire. It's fine. Yeah. It's all right. Wife, wife picked it up. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but yeah, if you do want to have a look over that, you can see the Tiger Moth. Obviously, it was up yesterday on the main site and those things. Your photos are getting better. Thank you. I use my box. Shall I show you how I do it? Look, I can show people. It's good. So I've, I've got, I've got, got a home free. box. Your box, your box, yeah, box, box how I used to do it. Literally, it's as complicated as that. It's literally just a box. And then sit, said model, and that's it. Works, so though, it's how it? I always yeah. used to do it. I know, something as simple as that. And it does, it does, it works. It's good. I think you should change so, the background to black, though. Yeah, well, I have got a black piece of card as well, so I was going to interchange them as well. Mm. So I will change it over. We'll get some black. I always used to shoot on black because I used to like it. But I showed you that Corsair picture, which looked quite nice. And mm. I took that on a horrible camera. It was one of his first digital cameras with a, like, you know, seven megapixel camera. <laughs> <laughs> it almost had wet film in it still. So, uh, but anyway, it came out quite nice. So I've gone back to doing that. And they say, if you take it outside on a sunny day, as long as it's not in direct sunlight. So uh, it uh, gives you very nice, clear photos. So, yes. Talking of photos, did you sell yes. all your camera gear then, Ander? Have you not got an SLR camera no more at all? Uh, I've got two. You've got two? Two. What megapixels are they? Oh, I don't mm. know, not not massive. Um, 12, something like that. I don't know. Because what are they now? What What's the SLR camera now? It depends. It's, it's not a lot to do with the camera. It's a lot to do with the sensor. I mean, I used to have an EOS 1D. They've got a mm. three megapixel was, was three megapixel, but it was it was a full frame sensor and it was fantastic. But yeah, it depends on the quality of it rather You've got than got to the know how to use it. <laughs> yes. Yes. Fair yes definitely. Okay, just to answer one question that's just popped up. It says Phil, does the uh, members discount code work on the EU site when ordering or only from the UK site? To be honest, there's a bit of a problem the eu site doesn't like doing discounts that's why to be honest there's a new website coming along which will sort all that for you so in the meantime if you are a member order it through me i pass the orders on to them and they'll dispatch it that's how we're working it at the moment purely because as i say the members 15 percent discount doesn't work so um, it just it screws the system it apparently it just doesn't like it so that's to be honest why it's having a new website developed and built as we speak so as soon as that's up and running you can do everything straight through the eu but for the moment members come to me and i'll pass your order on to them and they'll dispatch it from the netherlands and send it that way so uh, yes jim says job. question jim says question andy what country are you located in if it's me andy i'm in the uk yeah this well, isn't Randy in chat. It's Let's <laughs> <laughs> say Nottinghamshire. I don't like Not, that. Does that sound better? <laughs> Nottinghamshire. I don't, I don't like admitting them from you, Nottinghamshire. You know Car Wars? <laughs> it's all Randy's neck of the woods. They go always going past Andy's ass on that programme. <laughs> a, 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 a lot of it's in the centre of Nottingham, to be honest with you. There's some dodgy <laughs> places in the centre of Nottingham, isn't there, Matt? Uh, oh. Yes, just a little bit. Icy Green and St Anne's and places. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, kind of. Sorry, not too much yet. <clears throat> I, haven't got my, I haven't got my glasses on, I have, but they're on top of me. Head. Because yeah, um, they're good up there. Because they're useful <laughs> on top of the head. <laughs> yes. uh, question for Phil. Uh, did you explain why the Hasegawa F4 Showtime 100 decals were incorrect? Apologies if you did on the stream, might have missed it. Uh, and that's Steve from Portugal. Uh, basically what it is, it's only a small little error, but the bird on the tail on Showtime 100, I think it's got a red eye or something, never had it. But also the thing is, it's 
the markings are slightly incorrect. If you go through a third party one and not Hasegawa's decals, they're correct. But I haven't done it for a long time. I used to know the subtle differences between it. But, um, but Showtime 100, as it's done in the Hasegawa boxing, isn't the one. That was taken from another one, uh, but it wasn't Randy Cunningham's aircraft. It was somebody else's. Um, but again, it's something to do with the bird on the tail has got a red eye and apparently it didn't. And uh, there's a couple of other little things with it. I can't remember them off the top of my head. I did know them, but that's when I used to do commission work a long time ago um, because it was brought to my attention by somebody who's definitely in the know. And uh, it was like, oh, OK, didn't know that. So, yes, but go off and check. But there is something not quite right with it. You can adjust the decals to get around the problem. Um, but uh, yeah, if you go after market, they're correct, apparently. There you go. Uh, question for Phil, will you be using arse decals in the future? <clears throat> Probably not. <laughs> Jesus. To be honest, they're on, they've gone in, and they've, they've worked an absolute treat once they're in. So, you know, if I just go full screen here a second, if I can grab the camera. But, you know, now they're in, they've gone in really, really well. You know, they are bedded down. You know, we've got no silver in problems or anything else like that. It's proper in there, you know. But, uh, cool. yeah, no, no, they have. They've literally, it's just that thing. It took a week for them to get them in there and all the rest of it. But once they're in, they're absolutely fine. It's just getting them in there. That's it. But you can see the panel lines all come through now. And I've weathered them and distressed them a bit. A bit of chipping in the room and stuff like that, which was on purpose. And, uh, but yeah, I think now they're in, it's, it's not too bad at all. It's just at the time... They just drove me mad because it, it's almost like they've got no adhesion to them. I think that's the problem. There's no sticks. All they do is sit on the surface. And I've got a feeling that's where the old um, Mr. Mark setting Neo, which I always think is just diluted PVA glue. I think that's what cured it. Why you have know? you not unmasked your side windows? Well, because I'm waiting to do it on camera and oh. not do it here. That oh. way, if it goes horrendously wrong, well, you've done then I can it. edit that out. You've done your turret. Yeah, that's because that's because the turret is still a is a, actually a soft fit. A nice detail in that turret. I'll give it that. It does look good. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you've actually got. Um, as I say, it's quite nice on these because it's. Uh, there you go. You do realise get the do... barrels in. Hey, so is your clear parts. What these clear parts? Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't think they had framing on a B twenty five. Yeah, they only have two. Apparently, it's just these run round the toplet, and there's the little ones just down in here. I think they weren't much, were they? No, there isn't much at all because all the framing was internal, wasn't it? Yeah. So hmm. yes. Looks nice though. Hmm. Yeah, I was going to say you can see all the detail in there, which is quite nice. Did you uh, print your fifty cows off yet? That well, to be honest, that's my next excuse. So <laughs> if you can hear something in the background in. Probably four minutes, it will finish, and I will turn it off. So if you can hear that, doo, doo, sounds like I'm near a marina or something. It's my 3D printer, which is literally just there. And I have printed off new barrels for the guns for this. But, like I was explaining to Andy earlier, it's probably the thinnest and smallest thing I've ever done. Mm. So I'm not even sure it's going to come out. So no. I've done 20, so I'm allowing for some failures. Right, so, okay. I'll, I'll, we can I'll... do it live together. I will go and get it in a minute, and live we can see if this has actually worked. But I've got, I'm not holding my breath because I've never tried to do anything as small as this before. I was saying about the Panzer Faust that we did, Matt. Oh, that <clears> Panzer Faust <throat> was a disaster, wasn't it? Just like, pe well, I, I can't even say a piece of paper. A piece of paper is more uh, rigid than that was. It was so thin, weren't it? Uh, yeah, it just kept collapsing on itself, unfortunately. Yeah. Brilliant detail. Absolutely amazing <laughs> detail. Everything, if it would have worked. But uh, we, tr we, what did we do in 116th or 135th? I think it might have been, must have been one thirty fifth. I think it was, weren't was it? it? Was it scaled down from yeah. one sixteen to one? I think it was scaled down, and that was the problem because the thickness was obviously scaled to one sixteen. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it's what. So what? Which file is this then? You used that one you sent me for the fifties. The one you sent me the link on. Well, Andy did it. I didn't do it. Just, just a reminder, Phil sent you a couple of the SMS buttons on forum messages. You, 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 Phil did mention that. Did you send them to me, Phil? I think I did. I thought I did. Yeah. I don't know. I have to check that. I can't do it on this because they're on the other computer. Yeah. Uh, for the guys who are asking for the discount code, I've just put it into our chat room. So if you just click on that link, it will take you over there. And you've got all the discount codes for all the different places we deal with. Um, so, yes. 
one before we lose it one of the guys in youtube chat says uh, what's your thoughts on the tamius 116th aggressor uh sorry f16 aggressor yeah. yeah no it's the best kit i've got it somewhere am i yeah uh, is that the one you can do, do different yes. versions of yeah, that's the kit you want to get because you can do it as a Block 32, the Block 30. It's got the War HUD in it and the normal HUD and all the rest of it. So you can pretty much do any F-16 out of that kit because it, it's got all the bits. So it's got the big mouth and the small mouth end to it as well for the intake. It, so if you're going to get an F-16, Tamiya, get that one. They're the F-16s, aren't they? Mm. Yes. So, yes, you can you can do everything there. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Uh, when did I get the elastic for the wires? That's literally prim knitting in elastic. So it's hmm. P-R-Y-M. Look on Amazon. I need to put that in my affiliate. And uh, I just use the clear stuff. And it's really straightforward. Very, very easy to use. Uh, but if you just, it's P-R-Y-M, prim. And they just call it knitting in elastic. I didn't realise until I did this one, but a lot of the members pointed out to me, you get it in colours now. They do it in black, all different colours. Whereas before they didn't. I just use clear and then paint it. So, um, and it, you can paint it with lacquer thinners, you'll be fine. Uh, Richard's asking, Phil, what's worse, Ars Decals or Eddard's New Style ones? I had my first try with Eddard's ones this week, so the results were mixed. A very good and total disaster. Yeah, that's how I would describe them as well. But don't get me wrong, I think the, the Eddard ones are really nice. If you're doing like a round or it's straightforward, it just peels off, it works and it's beautiful. But if it's a complicated shape, like lettering, then it's at literally asking for trouble. It's good on big stuff, but little stuff, it's a little bit of a pain. Uh, do, 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 do. Yes. Uh, Andy, I just received the British Phantom book uh, for me. Uh, just picked up the Hasegawa Sabre from the post office. <laughs> Looks great. Pleased I got it. Uh, the last one, uh, sorry, last but not least, just bagged the tiger moth from you. Good job. You'll like the tiger moth. It's very nice. Mm. Tiger moth. Good Stay. kit. Good kit. Excellent Ty kit. Typical sort of ICM 30 seconds. They're just nice, not overly complicated kits, aren't they? So, yeah. you know. Yes. They've got, it'll That's look well with your gladiator. It. I think we should put the gladiator on the same base. I like this thing. I think they should, yes. Which What's is about that? stupidly complicated and well, yeah. rubbish and... Yeah. Two nice. minutes, two minutes to run on that. I'm quite excited to know if it's done it or not because it's really short. They're only 17 mil. I can't see if it's done it or not. So we're going to lift this up together and I'm going to go like that and there's just be nothing there. <laughs> I hope you don't mind, but I'm going to be really excited today and build some tracks out of resin. Because <laughs> for anybody, look, look, Jim, look, Jim, it's here, look. It is kind of progressing very slowly. You go, where am I? There we are. There we are. There you go. So there's a, there's some resin printed tracks, which actually are really, really quite good. You can get a bit, a bit of sag. bit of sag, yeah, a bit of movement into them. Look, and they actually roll as well, look. Workables, really. Mm. Um, but yeah, I need building, but it's still it's still progressing. And here's my little thing, look, from the other day. And it was showing on Thursday, and obviously uh, YouTube people don't see, but little vignette I'm doing, so I've decided to put fence on it, look. Movable, so next is textured soils and grass and whatever. Do you know what? I don't know what figures to do with it. That's the problem. I have no idea what figures to use with it. Hmm. So I need to figure that out, really. I've got I some... want to build a little base for the B25, but on the other hand, I've got a space to hang it on the wall between the B17 and the Lancaster, so it's like... I'm mm. torn. I thought about using them, look. Nice. Like they've uh, took out a Sherman or something, or mm -hmm. a T34, wherever you want to, you know what I mean, wherever they are. But I don't know. I don't know. I'm undecided. I'll see. I'll figure it Mark, out. Mark, it's finished. Can you hear it? It's lifted up. Oh. Go, right. <laughs> Give it a chance. Give it a chance. I'm going to let it drip a minute. I said this is where it drips resin all over his... Yeah. Yeah, well, I know. That's the whole point. Hold on. Let me get some gloves. Safety first, everyone. That's it. Brace yourselves. We're going me and, to dry. Me and Andy are nose blind to <laughs> smell of resin now because we had a we had a, uh, a guest come yesterday, didn't we, Andy? Yeah. Oh, no, what's that smell? We're like what smell? What smell? Anything? <laughs> it's like <laughs> the resin. Right. Resin and move some stuff out of the way. And then I'll. 
just for these tracks, I am using some uh, 0.3 jewellery wire. Oh, wow. I've got... I can see things. Oh, no. What? Just blobs? No. Has, right, it, hold on. has it worked? Well, something's worked. I just, hold on. I've got to try and get it off the freaking... You do it like this. <clears throat> wow. I don't know if this will even show up on camera. <sighs> oh, God, this is where I'm going to put resin over everything. <laughs> yep. <laughs> right, OK. What do we want? That one. Look, it's worked. Have a look. Oh, oh yeah, that's as well, isn't it? Look, I've got no failures on that, which I'm amazed with. That's probably the smallest thing I've ever printed like that. I'll take it the fine. holler. Oh, there's the barrel holler. Uh, some of it is only about the about a third of it. Yeah, yeah, but you don't, you don't need to go all the way, does it? Not the whole length is hollow, but yeah. Oh, I've got a hair in there. Look, that's a bloody dog hair. Look, going across it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can see it, yeah. dog. So yes, right. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to stand it in some IPA. Yeah. And let it uh, do its bit. Hey, so that'll be fun getting them off the build plate. Oh, well, I'll just scrape them out. That's why I've got 20 <laughs> spares, just in case it goes <laughs> wrong. Picking them up off the floor. Right, let's just give this a bath. I won't turn it on, because we don't want to make a noise. There we go. That one's going there. That one's going there. I have got a bloody dog hair in there. How's that possible? Because your dog molts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's why you've got your dog that doesn't. Exactly. <laughs> we, we thought ahead. Just, just going back to decals. Mm. Yeah. Greg says he's, he's struggling with AFE decals. The shafts as soon, um, as, soon as they bring water. Of course, has got the same kit. He's a bit worried about them because I don't think you can get the BF111 Sundown as, as aftermarket for the F5. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah. Oh well, I'm happy with that. We'll just let him sit there. <clears throat> I don't think I've ever built a AFE Club aircraft. I've got a couple, but I don't think I've ever built one. So done... my oh. little thing is, you know when I do mine and I just put them on the desk, so I put some water ah. down in here, warm water, softener, put them back on their back so they're face down, just let them go, don't let them curl. And literally just sit them on there, let them totally soak through, flip them over and just leave them off to one side and you'll find they're slippy. But AFV decals, they can be a bit like, to be honest, the arse ones. If they fold, they snap. So, but also it's that thing, if you put them into water, the paper curls a bit and it can snap it. So that's why all decals tend to, I literally don't bother with any type of pots of water anymore. Straight onto the cutting mat because it keeps them from technically folding up and rolling and all the rest of it. So by the time they're slippy, they can move. But if they can't, what happens is when it bends, it just cuts them, you know, snaps them, um, because they are tend to be a little bit brittle. Um, but again, that's why I always do it that way. Keep them nice and flat, slide them onto it, get them to conform, and you should be okay. That's why I hate decals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to be honest, that was the nice thing with this one. Uh, we had a little bit of a mare with the rudder because I wanted it to fold around the rudder. So you've got that painted look goes right the way through it. So getting a decal to wrap round a very thin rudder like that isn't straightforward. Um, so took our time with it though, and it did work really, really well. It's uh, no problem with that. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Uh, where are we? So looking at questions. Uh, Again, it's that thing with decals. When you're using it, don't put them into really hot water, but put them into warm water. you just got to be sort of tepid water. Um, that way, as I say, they don't go into shock almost, and I think that's when they crack and shatter. Uh, question for Phil. Does the Tiger Moth uh, kit include the anti-spin strikes, which were fitted to most... Uh, RF Tiger Moth. What's that bit? Now you're getting technical. Now you're being technical. What's it look like? I did mine as a 1938 version, so I don't know if there's a different version between the, them. On, on the, the later tiger, ones. It doesn't have different 
bits on the tail. It has some horizontal straight things that come out from the from the body to onto the tail, I think. Oh, is onto that what he the... means? Yes, you get both versions in the kit. So mine's an early one, doesn't have it. But if you get the later one, I might even still have the part. So have I binned it off already? Uh, hold on, I might have still got the parts. Yeah, so do you mean... Get that car. Sorry, wrong one. Where are we? There we go. So what you've got is this plate here. All right, so this one can go oh, in here. That, oh, the fillet bit. So it's bit. like a fillet, sorry. So it goes in, it literally goes in some, well, some part anyway. I think it, it goes in here somewhere. Is that straight? I can't remember where it, there it is, it's at the top. So yeah, it obviously comes in like this. So if, do you mean that bit? If so, yes, the kit comes with it. You've got two versions. Mm. So I don't think this particular version, there you go. Yeah, so you've got, if you mean this bit, yes, you get both. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's a strength them. I think it's just like, like I said, it just stops it from the tail mm. from yawing and spinning when you. Oh, okay. It's easy. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yes. Bear in mind, it was a trainer, wasn't it? So. Mm. So yeah, if so, all the kits will come with this because it's a standard part. It's D thirty two thirty three, so they'll mm. all have it with or without. I did mine as an early one, so consequently, it uh, it doesn't have it. Fair enough. <clears throat> so, Matthew's there, very busy, look, wiring tracks. Yeah, the most interesting job ever, in it, of building armour. Mm. They're not hard to do, they're just tedious. At least they're pre-drilled, at least they're not like the old full tracks where you have to drill everyone out to clean it. These are pretty, actually, good for that. They're all they're all done for you, just got to wire them. In chat. Uh, Alan says, Andy, where are we with the 172nd Liberator? Still not anything yet, have we, Matt? No. I thought it was coming in when the Mariner came in, if I'm honest. Yeah, so yeah, of course, yeah, because it, yeah, we thought it was coming on that same didn't we? Yeah. Well, you know, if, if that's the one you're on about, like the Academy one, obviously the um, Airfix Liberators may, is it? I yeah, think it, I think it means the, uh, the Academy one. Academy one. Yeah, I, I honestly thought it was going to come in. Um, with the, with with the this last order, yeah. Yeah, yeah no. I've just had a look and it's still showing as... Um... No, not in. No. So I'm just washing me uh, doing it manually instead of putting it in the machine. Good idea. Yeah. Because our whole system of back order is completely automated. You see, we put them on back order. Yeah, Phil gets an email. Phil, Phil emails us. Yeah, it's a bit third party, but it works. <laughs> <laughs> to, to tell us that he has an email. Yeah. So that... <laughs> oh. We have to move it into the past. Yeah, it's a bit. <laughs> right, okay. I'm going to let that drip dry a sec. I think we'll be all right. Then we can have a comparison between both. <clears throat> Well, as the system works, don't really matter, but yes, changed it, yeah. haven't they? So, what's your next build, then, Phil? Proper build? The Apache is it? Or are you doing Proper build is, is the Apache. Come get get it out. Let's have a look. Come to on. See me, me chopper. Yeah, get your chopper. Get your chopper out on. on your big chopper. You get censored. Hey, you'll yes. get done for sexual harassment in the workplace for that. Yeah, just call me <laughs> allegedly James Horner. But anyway. <laughs> yes, so this is my next proper build. I've got another build on the go, which is obviously a bloody great Y wing. Um, so, uh, but yes, so we've got this one to be my next proper build up for this. So I've got to get a couple of bits in for it. Uh, but generally, apart from uh, all the aftermarket I'll put in it, it's all going to be out of the box. So, uh, but yeah, anyway, big thing about this one is going to be painting it. Because the colour, trying to get it right and all the rest of it, is uh, going to be the thing. So, oh, yes, we could definitely. we could send you uh, SMS US Hello Drab. Hello yeah. Drab, that's a good idea. Yeah, have you? Yeah, well, we could do that as well. We'll see how good that one is. Because I've got AK's one here. Who? Uh, Who are they? Somebody I don't know. They've discontinued their paint range for the moment until they bring it back. 
<laughs> so it's it's very quiet about that paint ring still, isn't it? Let's be um let's be clear. Well we're in put it this way, we're into March now and still haven't heard anything. Yeah. So Yes. Anyway, we will see how that one particularly pans out. Yeah. So seeing as I'm not being funny, I was very badly let down by the CEO of the company. <laughs> just saying. If he's watching this, just fine. If you didn't want to tell me, it's all right. I thought we were friends. Now now we know where we stand. I've obviously <laughs> yeah. upset them now. I've upset Airfix. I've upset them now. I'm doing well this year. We are, so, yeah. Anyway, that's all right. I've got companies who still love me. <laughs> like uh, <laughs> yeah. uh magic factory they still like me clearly what was the other one who sent me something the other day oh that uh, funny place latiki yeah the latiki we like latiki yeah. and uh Mag iron dome ICM um, the like, magic yeah. factory icm Wait. like us as well i always get a nice email from oh that's a good point the marauder yes don't belong apparently think. well this is it peter oxley he mm -hmm. says that it's going to be released on the 25th of this month well, that's good. I'm glad. Which is about time. We've only been waiting for it for a year. Um, you know. What's been released, sorry? P26 Marauder. Oh, Marauder. <laughs> yes. Good kit. That's going to be. Very, very good kit. Do you reckon could be kit of the year? Um. Well, as I say, I've got to see it first because I haven't seen anything. But we will see. Uh, how it uh, sort of pans out, isn't it? Hmm. So I'm going to build it because it can go very nicely with a B25. So I'm into my medium bombers these days. Uh, what scale is... Uh, yes, that's it, Jim. You've answered your own question. It's 135th scale. What? The Apache. Apache <clears throat> is, yeah. Yes. Yes. A good one. To be honest, there was a very interesting document, well, not documentary, but a little short film that the Sun newspaper, hey, who knew, put up about the uh, the new version. Because obviously, this one that we use used to be the uh, Augusta Westland Apache, so it's built under license. Which I remember seeing the very first one turn up on the back of a lorry that went into Westland, so uh, and all the rest of it. And I used to live literally at a place called Montacute, which isn't very far from Westland Helicopters. So all the ones which were done. Back in the early sort of 2000s, they used to all be test flown over our house, which was always quite fun. Sorry, that's yep. the other half at work. So, uh, but yeah, I used to see them. But the new ones now are all built by Boeing. And they've all got, I think it's General Electric engines in it, I think. Why aren't Westland like. building them? Well, this is the good question. But no, because it's they've moved up now. We're on the E-type. So we've all got the Echoes now. So, in um, in our chat, mm -hmm. yes. Phil Selwood says, uh, peer models still like you, Phil. Yes. Well, that's well. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. When he, uh, when, he, when he does as he's told, we like him. <laughs> yes, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably very true. <laughs> <laughs> David, David says, um, Phil, no Sunday, uh, no Saturday build about the CL215 or the uh, English Electric Lightning. Well, the thing is, we're not doing as many as we were because we were doing a ton of them. So it made I could build along with it quite quickly. But yeah. what we will be doing um, is we've got Easter, which is end of this month, isn't it? Easter. Yeah. So we're going to have an Easter special show with you. And that particular one, I am going to be building the Sword 72nd scale two-seat lightning, which I've got it here. It's all queued up, ready for me to go. So I'm going to be building that. As in, on the Easter show. So at the end of this month, we've got the Easter show with you. We'll be doing specials, and that'll be a proper build-along job. And um, so I'm going to build that as part of a live show, right, which will go really well with my other one, which I built a couple of years ago, which I built the Airfix one. So that's the plan for that one. And Tom says, hopefully the Boeing Apaches, the doors don't fall off. <laughs> Why, was that a problem with Westland Apaches? That's no, I think he's talking Boeing. about the... Uh, <laughs> Boeing's uh, planes falling out. Have you seen that little clip they did? Somebody's done a, like a sketch of them. It said, hello, welcome to Alaska Airlines. We're dedicated to your safety. So from now on, we will tighten all the boat bolts on the doors for you. <laughs> and it has this entire little sketch of all the safety things for them. So, yes, I thought that was quite funny. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. So Wait, what I'm going to do... I think Andy should show us his um, portlet. My gauntlet. Not a gauntlet, what is it? Flycatcher. Flycatcher. Is Venus flycatcher? 
no different title obviously. Yeah, but yeah, but YouTube land's not seen it. So no, they haven't seen, seen it. it. Do they, they really want to see it? Oh god, they want to see that. a specialist kit from a specialist manufacturer. That's what they need to see. Face, I'm doing a fairy fly catcher, so if you don't know what it looks like, it looks like that. I'm doing it in that colour scheme. Mm-hmm. And the so engine, which is now you. built, was a hundred and what did they say, 110 parts. <laughs> 110 parts. <laughs> For the engine. Ridiculous. Oh dear, 110 uh, parts. So it's basically together all the seams are done nicely, ready for well, where am I? Done nicely, ready for spraying. I've built the undercarriage up, but the, it's actually just I blue tacked it to the fuselage so I can now take it apart and take it off, ready for spraying. And it should, hopefully, it says, all stay in one piece, like that. So that's now all How solid is that undercarriage? Hey, it's, it's actually not too bad. It would have been it's much easier if I'd glued it to the body as I was doing it. But because I've got it blue tacked on, the blue tack kept moving on me. And, yeah. yeah I, I struggled a bit with it, but it's now it's together. It, yeah, it's not too bad at all, do you want to mean? It's fair. I mean, in real life, the plane's got to be solid, fairly solid, hasn't it? Because it's an aircraft, goes on an aircraft. Yeah, I was about to say, it lands on an aircraft carrier thing, yeah. though. It should actually have a sturdy undercarriage. Yeah, you can tell it's different to a World War One aircraft, even though it's like only 10 years apart, because it's got um, suspension struts and things, I believe they are, rather than just having bits of bungee, bungee rope around it. So <laughs> Bungee strap. <laughs> bungee strap, yeah. yeah. Just bungee corded together. Yeah. But I've got a lot of photo to put on the wings and things before I start ah! to spray the. Um, right, I need some super glue. We track silver, silver, which I'll I'll base coat the silver with a gloss black to bring it all out. And yeah, and it's just messing around with all the other bits, thousands of other bits. Thousands of them. Thousands of thousands. them. Thousands. Yeah, it, I think I'm past the worst bit until I get to the rigging. <laughs> rigging, that's going to be fun. Don't like rigging. Who does like rigging? Let's be honest. Phil, Phil likes rigging. I don't rigging. mind doing the ICM one. That was all right. Yeah, but, but that, so that's exactly the same as how the Rebel did it, isn't it? Where it's two part wings and you thread it through. The Rebel Tiger yeah. Tiger Moth is exactly the same, which is how old was that? Yeah. Is that the old Matchbox? Yeah, Airfix did it yeah. as well. Yeah, Airfix the old Matchbox did it as well. One, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they were saying that Airfix did it on those, the Hastings. Right. But apparently it's the same. Yeah. But obviously this thing isn't, so... Mm. And there's no markings on the wings, I'm sure, where the... Um... Well, it might be, it might be actually. So I might end up drilling those out a bit more so that the uh, thread goes in easier, in easier when I glue them on. Don't you? Ah, it's, um... it's getting there. It's keeping you occupied, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it keeps them off the streets. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Bits of it I've absolutely hated, but there's a bits of it that I quite enjoyed. It. Even though the undercarriage was really difficult because of how I've done it, more than a bit really difficult, I thought like, really enjoyed. A lot of the um, internals, it's 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 very much like uh, you can see where the sort of hurricane design came from. Even though it's this is made by who's it even made by? Fairy, it's a fairy vibe, yeah, yeah. yeah. But sort of like the, the construction is very similar to a um, hurricane, whereas like the front section up to the beyond the wings here, all this, all that bit is all metal. Then the back's all ribbed, um, but all the internals is all sort of very similar tubular. So like metal and what have you, which was a pain because none of it was right and fitted right, and I ended up using plastic card sort of like struts to build off of it back together again. But what's wrong with it? Right. Well, I was going to mask this, but yeah, that's not happening. So I'm going to use the old O-ring trick. So we're just going to place an O-ring just down in here. We will spray the body, and then what we'll do is we will then mask it. Onto, onto it and then spray the nose. So that's the plan with that one. On what? On my bims. I'm doing the bims because oh, I've tried oh. to I've tried to mask round here, but that's not going to work because it's too much of an angle for get it round. It is on, and you could use it, but it's going to look a mess. 
So what I tend to do is two stage spraying now. So we use a little bit of tack, just literally like this. So we've got some white tack. Let's do a bigger bit so you can see it. All right. We've got an O-ring, which is literally just one of these out of a pound shop set of O-rings. I wouldn't use them on anything important, but it's great for doing this stuff because literally it is just that. So if you ever want to put rings around anything at all, because I use this on all models, as I say, they're crappy stuff. I wouldn't use them as a real O-ring, but for this they're fine. And then all we do is we just come along and we're going to place said tack in here. We then come along and we place onto nose and we just do it like that. We spray the entire of this, which I'll do with you in a minute. All right, let it dry. Once it's dried, then we can actually just take the tack. All right, then we just place it on the outside. Once it's dried all the way around, then we put the ring on here, push it up to meet it. So it's held in place. We'll do like so. And then we spray the front. Then the idea being is you come along, take it off and you've got a nice yellow band. So that's the theory. Let's see if it works, shall we, kids? <clears throat> so, yes. Just reading some questions in YouTube land. Mm -hmm. Steve says, I don't quite understand this, but he says, "Do hi, guys, do you think ICM would daze its about time 148th available? I think, I think might need to rewrite that question. <laughs> Did I write that? <laughs> but I did it. <laughs> Get Kareen to, read, to, to do it for you. Yeah, Kareen's my no proofreader. She does all of that because, as she points out, I don't speak English or write it very well. <laughs> comes to something. I know she's bilingual, but that's harsh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dolph Muzzer says, uh, uh, question, Any new? Uh, has there been any news on Bandai and the Star Wars license? Did I did see some footage on Rebel Stand, a recent hobby show, in Germany, where they had Bandai boxers as well as their own. I didn't realise it had changed. I thought Bandai still had the licence, unless that's changed and something well, I don't know about. Well, Rebel have been doing Bandai yeah. three boxes, haven't they? So, I th but I did hear that they would they'd lost and they and they lost the licence for it. So the Rebel weren't doing the Bandai stuff anymore. I don't know. I haven't heard that myself, but. To be honest, I'm a bit out of the loop. I haven't been really paying much attention on that side of things recently on the sci-fi front because I've been doing other things. But mm. yeah, maybe. Jim says, um, as my high school teacher said, remember men, fly spread diseases. Keep yours closed. There you go. There you go. Alan says, Phil, why aren't you using the O-rings for that job? There you go. I am now. So that answers that question. Trouble is, is getting them to sit on the top, so that's why you have to do it twofold. If it's just a normal band, if you're putting just one in here, what I'd do is I'd just take the O-ring and just put it onto it like that. You know, actually physically onto the item works absolutely fantastic. But because it's right on the tip, I know we're talking about the tip now, so what we need to do is just gently hold it in position because we don't want it to go too far. Oh, God. Demonetized again. Demonetized. Get him off. <laughs> Alfonso yeah. says, an idea for your 44 sig. On the 23rd of March, it will be the 80th anniversary of the Great Escape. Can we do Steve McQueen on a motorbike jumping over some ball? Yeah, can you do that? Yeah. Some slight little divot. <laughs> on his Triumph, wasn't it? Or Royal Enfield or something they used? Was it? I, I think so. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I think they in, um, in Germany in 1944. Yeah. I think it was supposed to be a BMW or whatever it was, a, a Zundap. <laughs> but it was actually a, a Triumph, I think. I can't remember. The, there's, there's footage on it. And... But wasn't it, was it Mythbusters or somebody did a thing about reenacting it all, didn't they? Yeah, that was it. Yeah, and they did the actual proper bike mm. they used at the time, which yeah. was a British bike. Um, mm. It's quite interesting, to be honest. Yeah, go on. Quite a good right. little I'll tell you what I'm listening to at the minute on Spotify. Hmm. Rogue Heroes. All right, okay. Uh, 13 hours. It's actually by the author who's narrating it. It's, it's really, really good. It's making me want to build some, actually, not SES, some LRDG. I'm getting quite obsessed with the LRDG at the minute. <laughs> and thankfully, I've got the Chevy truck to build, so that's going to be a video built soon because I've got loads of gear and bits and bobs for one. So, um, 
If AK have come good, I'll have some wheels as well, which means I can get on with it. But yeah, the LRDGR. Did you watch the series, Matt? Yeah, I've watched. Yeah, I've, I've yeah. watched it. But the book, like I say, the author of the book is narrating the um, series on Spotify. It's about thirteen hours, yeah. I think, worth. And I just have it on in the background if I'm if I'm not on with your lot. And um, yeah, it's really good. It's really good. You know. Really good story, shall we say, but it's obviously true, isn't it, most of it, so. Yeah. Got another uh, question. Oh, go on. Then. Is it okay to use oil paint thinned with mineral spirit over a model, over top, over a model top coated with acrylic water-based varnish? Yeah. I'm concerned that the mineral spirit will attack the top coat, of, uh, attack the top coat. Nope. Let's, de- let's debunk this myth about. Debunk paint. this, yeah. Proper annoying. Not that you've asked that question, I mean that, but, you know, the crap that people say, you can't put this over that and you can't put this and that over this because it'll do it. Rubbish. As mm. long as whatever paint you're using is fully cured, yeah, you can overcoat it with anything pretty much, you know, wash-wise yes. or paint-wise. So you can put lacquers over acrylic primers, no problem, as long as the primer's dry and vice versa and enamels over acrylics and... As long as your paint's dry underneath, your, your, your ground coat, whatever you want to call it, it you're not going to have a problem. The only thing you've got is when you get into lacquers, isn't it? As in, you can't use lacquers as a wash, but lacquer is paint, you can paint over anything. So, yes, don't believe what other people tell you. Just while you've got that in your hand, Phil. I know, well, that's the question I was just about to read out. Oh, Go on, you read it out and then I'll talk them through it. Yeah. Tom says, uh, Phil, can you explain the board you're using again, please? Are those grooves guiding you to cut the paper to cut the cut to cutting the tape? Yes. Now it is available. If you pop over to the PM store, we've got them in, but it's under a different well, name purely because they've changed now. We've Go only got tool. number twos. We're out of number ones. We're going to oh, restock. Right. I've just literally put okay. an order in. So, we've, so there uh... you go. Stick your name down in here, and you'll get told when they're back in stock. But AK have rebranded it. It's exactly the same thing as you can see from theirs to this one. And it's 20 quid, but I've had mine now, absolute, well, decades. And yeah. it's absolutely fine, all right? So literally, all you do, you take your tape, like I just showed, all right? You come along, pop your tape in onto the board, and obviously you can cut it in any direction. So you can come across, you can go downwards, you can do big sections. And then basically it's got grooves. So you can literally just come along here, for instance, we just come down in here, and then we just take out, and you've got a perfect square or rectangle like that or as i say you can go along so obviously i don't know quite where the uh, edge is but this has got grooves which you follow so this is literally what's this a 0.6 mil and it goes from 0.4 up to one mil on the on here but obviously if you go the other way you've got other things as well so obviously down in here you've got 10 mils and you know 0.5 mils and going this way all right but once you've got it in like that for instance you can just come along if you want a nice thin tape and you've got it like this. I don't buy thin tapes anymore. I just buy big rolls like 18 mil Tamiya and stick them down and cut them to whatever size you actually want. And again, they do do other ones like we were saying. Uh, so you've got the circle one, which you can see, this is the B. So again, down in here, you've got grids, squares, checker plate, everything you could ever want. And again, don't think it's just that size because obviously you just get bigger. So down in here, you've got 2.5, 4.5, 6.5, 8.5. And then again, you've got the smaller circles on here with all the diameters in it as well so you've got like 0 0.3 0 0.5 0 0.7 0 0.9 point 11 and again all the different ones all sorry all the full size up here but any different one you want to use so if you want to do a circle for instance pop it down here cut all the way around it but it is as you can hear it's grooved so the blade just goes in and just follows and you're good to go and obviously just, this one does diagonals or yeah i'd just say mm -hmm. use a new blade or a sharp blade okay so i'm going to slightly call that Purely oh, no, because no. I know if I shouldn't. Yeah. I don't want to undermine I'll, you. I will mute you. you. <laughs> <laughs> but if you use a brand new blade, it could jump and cut through your board. So I actually find that obviously you want a sharp blade, but it doesn't have to be a brand new. Only because I've done it so many times. I've got a brand new blade in one of my other knives, and I was doing this the other day, and literally it came out the grid, and I didn't realise. So you need something with a little bit of a bigger blade so it follows really cleanly. So I find that perhaps not a brand new blade, but obviously it's still a sharp one, 
goes because that way it's more inclined to follow the line especially when you're doing circles and that's where I made a hash and actually you can see it down in here I made a hash of this because I had a brand new blade and I thought I was following the groove but it was actually cutting its own and uh, but anyway I've literally had this now well over 10 years and it is you know you, I've been cutting it and cutting it and it hasn't you know literally made any damage or anything else to it but if you do you know suddenly make a little bit of damage it can be a little bit of a problem because the next time you come along it'll try and follow that other new sharp line so uh, but yeah but great so lines things like that small tamiya tape and also you can see down in here i've got some blue on here so bands around missiles things like that i've got different color tapes just cut them put them onto the missile save them to paint and mask it and away that, you go that one that phil showed with the circle at the top and got squares at the bottom mm. on the squares you can do like chevrons and things or arrows yes. and yeah. yeah using the chevron it's good they really are good well yes. worth buying. yes so but yeah type two is the uh the second one that i've got there they call it a type b infinity but these are infinity boards but ak's got them now so i think they yeah. hoovered them well, up. They did choose, uh, uh, do you know what i don't understand they obviously they do what they've numbered the one and two but mm. there's in the actual infinity range there's two more isn't there there's about four of them yeah yeah three. this is this is c and d which i've got as well yeah, which but, are radials and curves and yeah i have got all four but ak's so, never done them have they they've never no, no. So if, you, if you did want to do them all, this is how they actually go. You've actually got curves, lots more of the chevrons and diamonds. You've got ovals on this one as well, but they never did it. And obviously the two which are available are these two, but I have got all four of them. And also as a bonus, if you've ever wondered what I'm cutting on, I use yeah. these for cutting photo etch and stuff. Yeah. Because one, you can see it when it's on here, and also it's a really nice hard surface to cut onto. So that's what I tend to do. So yeah, these black plates I use, it's literally an upturned infinity board. Which are dead handy for that. Yeah, or actually I'll give you that, yeah. yeah. But I haven't bought thin tape, like one mil tapes and stuff, years now, because literally I always just use this because it's quicker. And it doesn't roll up and go funny and all of your thing else that can happen. Cancel the order for uh, one mil Tamiya tape, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, chuck it in the bin. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what colour should I paint the bombs, everyone? Ooh. I always find that it's not just green or olive drab and all the rest of it. Usually I paint them in uh, Tamiya XF81, REF dark green. What about uh, XF5? Yeah. Uh, what's that? No, that's proper green. That's flat green, isn't it? Isn't that yeah. like Bronswick green? Proper green, that is. They did. Oh, no. When you see them, they seem to like sitting out in the fields for ages, didn't they? For... Yeah, that's it. They've just been kicked around for a couple of months before they dropped. Tony says he's looking forward to seeing my uh, my catcher painted. Hmm. So I've got lots so of bits of photo which is why I'm not doing anything now because it's literally tiny bits of photo which stick on the wings and sides and things at the moment, and then I can undercoat it black. Um, which will be a nightmare. Join us for the Christmas show. Yeah, no, it'll be finished before. <laughs> before, finished before um, Will it be uh, done before uh, Easter? Uh, possibly. And then Adam right, says the only end of the month. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Bill says he's building a flycatcher. It's really testing his patience at the moment. Yeah, it does have a. It does have its moments. Just hmm. think the satisfaction though when you've actually finished it. It's going to be one of them where I've actually conquered it. Do you know what I mean? All right, perhaps not. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 I'm, I am looking forward to it being finished. Anyway, Phil, talking of crap kits. Yes. Halifax. Yes. Soon. When you start in cleaning it up. Probably after Easter. I think we'll get up to Easter because that will get me the Apache done and the yeah. Y-Wing will be out of the way and then I'm going to crack into it then because obviously we'll be into April may june july august september and october to finish it <laughs> <laughs> december january yes yes i think that's roughly where we'll be with that one definitely going to be a bit of a slow burner then isn't it i think it's going to be definitely a slow burner i'm not expecting a huge uh, development things on that one so yeah it's going to be one of those we were saying about you know shows that aren't on the, the show so to speak then yeah it's going to be definitely one of those Is i think it's it I was about to say, mine's definitely going to be a vlog build, not a live 
you know, a video build. Yeah, think. yeah. It yeah. will be a proper, say, video build, vlog build, rather than live building that one. Yeah. <laughs> so, be fun though, not. Yes, it'd be good. Be one of those we'll look back and think, yeah, that worked well. No, we'll look back and go, why? Why? What were we thinking? Okay. Matt yeah. made me do it. But it's yeah. In a Peer pressure. Special home, rocking on my chair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be on the end. Well, that's the quality of the plastic you're working with, where it's just... Hold on, Andy, I'll put you on full screen. Here we go. Bubblegum and everything's got a great big flashing on it and... <laughs> just... Is that sink marks or ribbon? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm calling it ribbon, but it could be... Could be... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I do that with rebel kits. Yeah, no, that's just got stressed skin. <laughs> not the uh, not the nicest one of them all. Not to admit. Right. Okay. So. Does anybody else actually do a fly catcher? In any yes. Scale? In um, any scale. The Lim Luke Graph. Limburg. Oh, it might be Luke Graph. Yeah. No, no. I don't know about Luke Graph. I think Limburg did one. Oh. Uh, 48 for that. I'm on about any scale to be honest. What was it? Oh, Silver Wings. Was it Silver Wings? Yeah. Oh, there we go. Well, let me just do this bit and then I'll. Yeah. I'm spraying this neat for texture. She said. Have you not put your surfacer on and, you know, textured them with surfacer first, or...? No, no, I haven't. No? No, okay. You're not going to see these, because they're you're buried not see, inside oh, yeah, of bottom buried. Yeah. yeah. They are literally not like, nothing to see here. Yeah, not like they're on a trolley route, is it? So. No. Oh, Ooh, we're struggling there. Doesn't like spraying thick, neat paint. But you got the airbrush one. Oh, this is just my... Uh, uh, yeah, what's it called? Yeah, the PS2 sent me. No, no. That's why I couldn't use the Fender Bender. Yeah, no, it might be a bit too much for the Fender Bender. Because the Fender Bender is nice. So, right, I'm making a mess here. What am I doing? That? So, we need that to go there. We need them to go there. And some more holders. You can never have enough reverse clamps. No, you can't. Oh, just while I remember, just for newbies who've not seen this before, and Go on. Shush, shush a minute. Sorry. Um, on the PM side of things, and obviously on Phil's as well, we, we've now take card and all sorts of different payment systems, don't we? <laughs> yeah, we can use Apple Pay. I see a lot of people do Apple After Pay. Well. Pay, clear After Pay, Clear Pay. Yeah. Debit card, all sorts. So yeah, it's not just PayPal anymore. Last year, before, um, it, we've now got the option, and it's a lot clearer than it's ever been, to be honest. Because before, it, you had to click on the PayPal button to then get to a debit card, which disappeared, yes. and yes, it, it went all a bit complicated. So a lot easier now. So yes, yeah. clear pay, clear pay after clear pay. pay. Right, I'm doing one more little track link and then I'm having a rest because these are getting a bit tedious now. I'm just mm -hmm. put the gate. You just got a little bit 8 bit there, Matt. I don't know why. Why? They on Netflix. No, they do. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Leslie's painting, painting glass, paint <laughs> in the book, eh? and uh, the daughter's at the dance class. Okay. So no, so no, so no. And right. If anyone's ever wondered what the connection is between peer models and floor models, mm -hmm. Phil is the P of the yes. M. And Matt is the M. M of PM. And Took Andy's a lot of doing that, hand. didn't it? Lot Andy's the sandwich between us. <laughs> I'm the full stop. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
bang these out. So the whole idea of painting that neat is that literally it struggles to spray it. So it puts texture actually onto the said bomb. So when you look at it, it looks like sandpaper. So under microscopical levels, um, then when you come in with like any type of dry brushing over it, it gives it a nice weathered texture. That's why I always do it. So just spray it neat. But as you can hear, the airbrush really struggles to spray neat paint. David says, what's your preference for payments? Uh, preferably money. Money? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. Anything. <laughs> Cash. Yeah. Although not Andy cash. will take no. in kind. <laughs> not, not cash. We don't take milk tokens anymore. No. Yeah, tiger tokens are out of date. Can't take them anymore. No, and we don't take chocolate buttons either. No. Uh, but uh, it's fair to me, yeah, uh, David, any sort of, yeah, well, we, however you want to pay. Yeah. Makes no difference to us. It goes into the bank and gets yeah. spent. It does. It goes into the bank. Dog's barking, can you hear her? Okay, uh, you're saying about a uh, question regarding EU online shop. Uh, I remember you could change the language in the options. Again, is it's having a new, there's a new website coming. It's in development as we speak. So uh, hopefully a lot of these things will be sorted out and all the rest of it. Uh, at the moment, Corrine's been doing all the uh, videos and the work's been translated. Currently, it's still going through the French section at the moment, but we hope to have Polish onto there in the future and everything else. So instead of using Google Translate, which is a nightmare, it's actually being properly written and read by people. So we've got uh, somebody in Spain doing it for us. We've got an Italian on the way uh, and a few different languages. So as I say, it's all very well using Google Translate, but it's not exactly brilliant sometimes. So we're having them <laughs> completely done by a real human. Um, who's yeah. doing it because obviously Kareem speaks uh, German and French and clearly Dutch and English um, and then obviously we've got other people helping us out with the other languages as well so um, but again it'll be one of those ones where it's just going to take a little bit of time because as I say it's more complicated than you think so especially trying to understand my my way of wording things <laughs> apparently, apparently it's me it'd be really simple if anybody else had written in it <clears throat> in a YouTube chat, Deadpool says, I've got a new Galliere, Galliere, Galliere airbrush for this well, Friday. Um, I tell you, they ain't bad, but they're not at the same level as Harder and Steenbeck Infinity, but they're close to the Water and GSI. thing is, it seems like everyone seems to think that Galliere is a new... Yeah. Well, you know why. They flooded the entire yeah. social media by giving away airbrushes to anybody yeah. who wanted one. They've been going for... So Donkey's yeah. years. Uh, it's worked for their point of view because it's given oh, great yeah. exposure and all yeah. the rest of it because everyone's onto it. They even offered me one, but you know what I'm like. I don't accept bribes and gifts and all the rest of it. So I was like, we, you're right, thanks. Well, me and Andy do. I know you two do. You'll be <laughs> freaking take anyone. But no, I, I'm good. I turned it down. It's a, it's an airbrush. I need it. Yes. I bet if someone offered him a free trip to Bahamas to promote something. Well, yeah, if, you, if, if I'm promoting it on some luxury event or somebody <laughs> wants to fly me, I'll sell my soul. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason for the texture on bombs is very simple. It's called an anti-cook-off coat. So it's a special coating that was applied to all bombs that started, I think, post-World War II. Uh, and it basically, it's, uh, it stops them, if they're on fire, blowing up straight away. They don't cook off as quick. But obviously it doesn't last. And, you know, if it's in a fire, they will cook off. Um, so, yes, it's, uh, it's one of those things. But the textured coat is literally, that's what it is. It's an anti, well, heat coat. But obviously it only works one way. It works from the outside coming in, but not the inside going out. So, but that's all it is, that texture. Um, Yoss yeah. says, morning, Phil, Matt and Andy. Haven't seen you for a long time. Is this a one-off? Um, it'll become a regular thing on Saturdays. Yeah, it's... Uh... last public show was in January. I thought it was um, every last Thursday show. 
thought it was the very the was every last Thursday now. We were going to have it's the show that me and Matt used to do on Tuesdays. The last Thursday one was always going to be a live one, but to be honest, because of work commitments and all the rest of it, it's very difficult to do it. So, and obviously, me and Matt at the moment, when we do the Tuesday show together, we can literally. And what's nice about it, Matt can turn around and say, "Look, I've got a load of orders. Can we do it later, or can we do it earlier?" And then if I'm doing filming, I don't have to work around it. So it's just a little bit easier for us to grab an hour when we're both free. Um, but obviously we don't know what that will be until we're there. Literally, it's like, do you want to do it now? I say we can do it now. And to be honest, over the last couple of weeks, we've had to edit it about 10 times and reshoot it because things have gone <laughs> wrong, horrendously <laughs> wrong. Literally, if anything could have gone wrong two weeks ago, oh my God, we had to do it five times. So, so yes, that was the problem with that one. But no, the live shows, like we said before, um, or I explained before, I always do my speech to the nation. Uh, which is obviously just the members because the members pay for this and the members are paying for all the free people to watch it as well so and obviously i always do a thing every single year and it's very open and honest and thank you to all the members who give us great feedback onto it and one of the ones was there was a hell of a lot going out for free uh which obviously people don't mind but why would you bother paying for it if you're getting it all for free so we just reined it in a little bit we're still doing it we're doing it now we still do the tuesday show which is free uh, as well so uh, and we're still going to do the specials but we just reined it in a little bit because at one point we were doing three free shows a week so out of the five or six shows we put out when over half of them is free and i do get it so um you know literally that was yes. just the thing it, it's business at the end of the day someone needs to pay the rent i need to pay me mortgage so the, the thing is as well though it's it's quite time consuming so it mm. takes up some of the day as in a working day so you know um we had to sort of just re reevaluate it, didn't we? Because it was, mm. you know, it's quite a commitment when you're doing it live for, well, like I say, two, at least two afternoons a week. Mm. So, yeah, it was it was getting a bit much, to be honest. <laughs> mm. Yes. And yeah. in, this is, we're not YouTubers, are we? No. And no. a lot of people who do it for YouTube is to get the, Ad revenue, so the more more times they do it, the more people that are on. It's mm. for the, yeah because of that. Whereas we're sort of like yeah doing it for the members. For the love of it, because oh, we like yeah. talking to everybody. Yeah, hmm. for the members and and yeah and, and the love of it. Yeah, so sort of like you know the, the the members are the ones that are paying Phil's wages. So, and again, this is the other thing as well. Just to put you know the full context into this. I would do this all the time. I love it, but. We are running a business. PM Models is a, a proper business with the building and everything. Um, yes. and like Flory Models is a proper business because I have to manufacture the wash and the pigments and everything else like that. Obviously, there's a lot of crossover between the two companies. Obviously, now we're working very closely with the new EU store with Kareen and stuff as well. So there's a hell of a lot going on. So you're very limited on the amount of time I can get proper bench time. And one thing I did swear I would do a couple of years ago after my little health kick was uh, literally get more bench time in. So that was the other thing as well, that I still try and produce every single week. There'll be two video builds, parts going up every single week. You get one on Monday, you get one on Friday for the members. Obviously, that's a, I know it doesn't seem it probably a lot of the time, but it is a highly edited, ready to go, proper video build on a particular build. Like we did the Tiger Moth in five parts. I know the B25 is going to be probably a 10 to 12 parter. Uh, by the time we get going, we have part nine of it go up on Monday. You've got part 10, I think, that's going to be up on this week on Monday. So, you know, and again, so there's various things going on. So when you take in like your hourly day, doing the orders, because obviously I have orders come in here and all the rest of it, manufacturing the wash, bottling the wash, everything else that goes into it, general day-to-day -day running with Matt and obviously Andy over at the PM store, working out what we're doing, the pre-orders, running the forum, which keeping an eye on it, making sure everyone's happy, making sure the members are happy. You have to imagine there's not enough hours in the day as it is. So we can't really just afford to sit down and say oh we'll do a couple of hours on youtube um so it's literally just finding a healthy balance because we don't want to burn ourselves out as well which is the other thing so we don't want to be yeah. sat in here for weekends on top of what we're doing all week as well we do need family time and stuff like that so literally it's just finding a balance 
the members are happy we're happy as a team as well to be doing it you guys are getting something from it as well but obviously priority has always been to the business you know the business is the membership it's obviously the pm models customers and pm models obviously with kareem working on the european side and obviously with avid as well working with the uh, braveco side of things as well so it's just balancing all these things and making sure everybody gets enough time and effort put in and i think one of the worst things that happened to me a couple of years ago is that when we were doing live at five every single day we were doing video builds we were doing all the reviews we were doing everything i was getting really burnt out through it and the quality was slipping because i was under pressure to make sure there's a video at five o'clock to be up every single day and then so you were doing live at five for an hour and there's a video build going up and a review every single day and it was like where's the time going so you work in 15 hour days and you know, killing yourself in the process just to make sure there's a video out. So we just brought it all back a little bit to make everything a little bit nicer. Alan, and to be honest, it's nicer I doing things like this occasionally than it is every day. It's more relaxed. <laughs> yeah, you look forward to doing it, don't you? Mm, it's not yeah. a chore. Yeah. It's not a chore to do it. I think like at def definitely back end of last year we're doing from what when we did we start just just before summer or whenever. I was yeah. feeling a bit burnt out with doing the live stuff. If I'm honest, it's like you. Um, your mo not your mojo i suppose goes it's just it's quite draining i think you know like mentally as well doing it um mm. and trying to keep it interesting as well i think like i say you can tell when the quality drops a bit but no this is great this, mm. you know feels feels normal again you know what i mean yes yes definitely <laughs> So, yeah definitely yeah. i think also the big thing is is that you know and i i think a lot of youtubers will probably understand this as well that you know this isn't a dig at youtubers but a youtuber does a video and he puts out one video a week or something you know mm. or two videos but also they've probably got a day job that's paying their mortgage and bills and all the rest of it so they do it on top of and that's probably all they can manage to do but when we're doing something as a video with us goes out every single weekday and at weekends as well normally so something will go up there as well and you're running multiple businesses you can probably feel that it's just time time constraints to be able to do it and i know it doesn't seem it sometimes but we actually do put a bit of planning in these so we have to think about what we're going to talk about yeah a little bit of planning but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know as well so it's like right what we're going to do a special what we can do we can do some building what we're going to build what we're going to show and all things like that as well and what we're going to talk about and just try and keep it fresh and stuff like that and as i say sometimes you can just you know we have a saying which you, you know you can't see the wood from the trees and you do you get so saturated into it you don't even know what you're doing you know and that's not a good place to be in so yeah yes yeah. it's like we do the um thursday shows which every other thursday now which are now just to members hmm. and we open up for questions but sometimes we've answered the same question probably 20 times yeah. and we appreciate it's new to the person that's asking it yeah but for us it, it gets a bit it is but like phil said it's you've got to think it's not us as it's for yes the, exactly you know, yeah yeah it's a mindset as yeah. thing isn't it you know what I mean? like i say it's, it's trying it's to keep it yeah. fresh for us isn't it yeah hmm. adam savage did a thing on it didn't he of like when he does seminars and meets people and how tired he was but yeah. then he's yeah. kind of rethought about it and and approached it in a different way and actually enjoys it now where it's like, hmm. and it's actually it's psychological it, it does make sense it makes perfect sense you know what i mean so hmm. that's why when we went to telford I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed meeting the members and talking and yes. talking modeling yeah. and stuff. Do you know? Because we, we don't seem to do it. We do it here, but actually mm. to talk to somebody face to face and their enthusiasm for the hobby. Yes. It's quite, you know. Um, it does. It, it's it does. Nice. It gives you do a real mean? lift and a kick. Yeah, yeah I definitely. Think it does. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking forward to when we are, you know, doing shows. You know, going to visit mm. some shows because. We're hopefully going over to Eindhoven, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. If we get that planned. Um, I think we're doing Telford this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, and I think, to be honest, I'm going to Yeovilton. Are you coming to Yeovilton, Phil? Because I think I'm going to Yeovilton. Uh, when is it? The weekend after Easter, the Saturday or the Sunday. I don't know well, if it is. I don't know when it I'm, is. Yeah, I'll, um, I'm I'll clear a, a thing. I'm yeah, go no, I'm happy I to go. Yeah. Is it going... back at Yeovilton itself or is it in no, the school again? No, 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 no. It's in the college or a thing. You'd have to ask yeah. um, uh, John. John. Yeah. But yes, I think I'm, go I'm going down to that. I think we're going to crash at John and Lynn's. And yeah. then um, me and John was going to go 
good to the show. I didn't know if he was going to come up and meet us. I know yeah, we meet. No, no, definitely. No, I met um, Greg from Greg's Models. Yes. Greg Phillips. Yep. I well, spoke yep. to him the night on Skype, to be honest. He needs to come on. You need to come on and talk to him as well at some point. But we're in a chat with him. And um, I think he's going to meet us as well. So yep. he's a he's proper nice bloke. Talks, he's, likes to talk models. So that's mm-hmm. good. He's on our wavelength. So, yeah, yes. no, we're going, to, we're going to have a visit. I don't know if, I don't know if the Bristol... Is the Bristol show still going, is it? Eight Eight yeah, I think so. I think that came back, yeah. Mm. So because we'll to... tell you what there's none up here anymore it was like the no. Bolton show which is my birthday and then the Leeds Armoury is one that um, I didn't even realise was on <laughs> if yeah. I'm honest as in the date I thought it was the week after um, and there ain't many, many more no Nant, Nant which was on which um, Nathan went to I think he's seen Peter week, obviously, and a, a few members um, last weekend was it yeah, last weekend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That looks yeah. all right. But yeah, no, like Northern shows are a bit quiet. There's a Hinkley show I might go to if you want to get to that, Andy. Yeah, yeah. When's that? I, think, I think somebody else might be going who visited yesterday. They might mm-hmm. nip down to Hinkley show and have a walk around there. That's a couple of hours, well, about an hour for Andy and a couple of hours for me, but it's not too far. Leicestershire. Um, but yeah, a lot of them are down south now. There's a lot down your neck of the woods, Phil, I think, down the southwest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I must admit, it's nice to see that the shows are coming back again. Yeah, it is nice to pot a rag. You do; it's full of inspiration. Milton Keynes, that was the other one. Mm. What was that coming back on? Not at the vet, not at the stadium though. It's somewhere else. Oh, right. it? I think that's coming back, Milton Keynes show. So yeah, I don't know. We'll that was like the best show coming. coming up was when it was in the stadium. It was nice when it stadium. Was the stadium. Yeah. yeah. Apart, from, apart from the wind. Apart from the windy day, but yeah. at least it's in summer and not bloody middle of winter. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I still want like to do some more more shows on the continent. I think because it will be a yeah. Mossel soon, won't it? That's yeah. in April. Yes, that was a good show. That was. I I was a, that was a great show. Mossel was. I'm definitely to try and go back to at some point. Hmm. You look, I scratched it. I might pull that feather in. You scratched what you scratched. Must have scratched me bim. <laughs> it was strange getting handed cars to go to a strip show, though, when you. Well, yeah, you don't get that in England. <laughs> you don't, you don't get that, Telford, do you? Your bands on your bombs by putting an O ring on. So, literally, <laughs> just slipping the O ring back on, and that way you get your nice banding on your bombs. Just like that. <laughs> yes, I must admit, it was, uh, yeah. You've been around the show and now you pop over to the strip club. Okay. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Lead on, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a point that we didn't. But... No, because no, we were professional. Yeah. And we had to drag. Hey, we were screaming our... and kicking, but <laughs> hey. It was with our other arms. <laughs> <Without good enough. laughs> How's your day been? Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, they, they were back at the hotel. Yeah, you look flushed. But, yeah. Well, yeah. We were just seeing how the locals do it. It's been very busy. <laughs> hmm? Hey, we could have got away with we've been looking at models. Well, well yes. <laughs> kind of, <laughs> usually. Mostly, <laughs> yeah. darling. It was just a model show. <laughs> We've uh, been looking at flights for SMC. Mm-hmm. Or Andy's volunteered to drive us all the way. Is he? <laughs> Is he taking we have a minibus <laughs> to go on tour? That's what we should do, hire a minibus and just drive. <laughs> and if push comes mm-hmm. to shove, we can always crash in the minibus. <laughs> Somebody must have a camper van. God. I am not sharing a camper van with you lot. No. <laughs> Confined. <laughs> Bit old for that. <laughs> Where's your sense of adventure? <laughs> I 
lost it about 20 years ago. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's like going <laughs> actually camping in a tent. <laughs> yeah, no thanks. I can't leave these tracks alone. Now I said I was just going to do a couple more runs and then pack in. I find oh. that when you're doing tracks, can't leave them it's alone. therapeutic. Once you get going, you're like, oh, I'll just do a few that's... more. I might do the lot. You know what? This will be my Saturday, even when we finish. I can see me getting this run done. At least one thing, I've actually got the other side to measure how many links I need. Yes. Because obviously when you when you first do a, do a run and you've got no idea, you're just building them and hoping for the best. Are they the ones we're printing off, each other? Yeah. The Panzer II ones, we really yeah. struggle to find. We find every other mark of Panzer apart from Panzer II until somebody done an, an upgrade set. But actually this, I think it was the early... Um, the other Panzer II, but obviously this is based on a Panzer II chassis, so these are for this running gear, thankfully. And they've got the good, good little tracks, to be honest. Josh says, anyway, then you guys watching Master of the Air? Your thoughts? I'm, I'm enjoying it. Actually, some of the, some of it's a bit dodgy, I think. But yeah, you know. I've not seen it, so I can't comment. Ah, I'm enjoying it. I watched last night's last night. And... I haven't seen last night's episode because I was out, but I'm up to date. I'm up to. I thought it was going to be a six-parter, but it's obviously a lot more, isn't it? I thought it was a six-parter, was not it? How many parts you're on now? Six. six. It'd be six last night, wouldn't it? That's it. Then it's finished. Let's have a look. Well, it's going to, was it? The last time I saw him, it was like episode five. It was just when they was entering the uh, prison camp. And Elvis was in there. Was he? Yeah, it was uh, a shock, but not a shock. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Big star. And he just vanished. They didn't even show him being shot down. And then he was in there. It was, you could see that one coming. What, real Elvis? <laughs> yeah, yeah, real Elvis. It is actually. I didn't realise I haven't seen it, but my other half has seen the film with him in as Elvis. So he's yeah, very I've, good. I've seen the film. Yeah. Hmm. I thought real Elvis were on the moon. <laughs> no, you're wrong. Apparently, nine episodes. Apparently. Oh, was it? All oh, right. Okay. There we go. Right. Okay. I am back. According to IMDb. Okay. Uh, right, okay, what have we got? Uh, doo -doo -doo. Uh, Peter says, question, Phil and team, did you hear about Mike Ashley buying yes. up 9% of Hornby? Yes, I did. Were well, they cheap? <laughs> the shares? I, I got told this like, this right. week, at the beginning of this week. Yeah, but did, so they, did have, they did already have some shares with them, didn't they? Okay, I'll, I'll buy it. Who the hell's Mike Ashby? Yes, um, Sports Direct. And, and oh, Gabe. right, okay. He used to own Newcastle United Football Club, but he yeah. sold it. He's, yeah. a, he's, a, he's a big body in business. Okay. He likes zero hour contracts, allegedly. Yeah, oh, right, okay, yeah. All right, yeah. But, nice. Yeah, he's, he's a Sports Direct dude, so I think, yes. Mm. Uh, I'm sure he would have some shares in, in Airfic or in Hornby. Or... Mm -hmm. And he sold, um, uh, started selling Airfix kits or Hornby kits or whatever in in game shops. Right. And I think um, he's bought some more. Yeah. And the, yeah, the the share price went quite up quite a lot when he. Um, All right. So he's helped when he bought some more. Very hmm. stuff. So, so soon it'll be my Castle's Hornby. <laughs> I don't think he's the sort of bloke who's just going to be happy with some shares. If you know where I'm coming from. <laughs> oh, right, OK. But we will see, won't we? Time will tell. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, apparently they're 14p, right? And they went up to 40p. That and Bitcoin, wasn't it? Do you hear about Bitcoin? 
No. Because Bitcoin was really cheap in the first days of it, and then it went not like yet. literally through the floor. It's not worth anything, and apparently now it's bounced and it's gone right up again. Why is that? Who's who's done something for it? No, somebody's clearly done something. Is it some influencer? I don't know. Who was old people's never heard of? <laughs> for me, Bitcoin. So anyway, Phil, tell everybody how your uh, Michael McIntyre gig was. Very good. Apparently he cancelled the news last night. All right. Had he had enough of Plymouth? Yeah, he was ill. Yeah. I bet he was. he was ill, so he had to bug out. And I was like, oh, right. Nothing to do with me. He's <laughs> staying at the road from here at a very nice swanky hotel, which is a castle, which is like, you know, you if you want a cup of tea in there, it's like 50 quid. He's not going to stop in Premier Inn, is he? In well, Newton be down with the kids <laughs> <laughs> oh bollocks missed one i mean bugger you should go and see your mate al murray he's on tour yes al murray flory models wash user everyone just saying <laughs> we need him on the show who knows he should do. he's had loads of it now You'll know, sit at the yeah. front and they'll come to you and say, What do you do for a living? Yeah. You'll say. The thing is, you actually said to him, I build models for a living. I wonder what he'd say. <laughs> I've heard proper stuff. Yeah, I'd say, yeah. Hey, I build models for a living. Like, you build models. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And you buy my wash. Yeah. Yes. It'd get yeah. You on stage, he's he's on my preferred customer list. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, endorsed by El Murray. Yes. <laughs> I tell you, your wash is becoming very popular on YouTube at the minute. Is it? I know yeah. somebody who did the sand crawler. Yeah, no, I, I, um, somebody I was thinking of raving in America about your wash, one of the US mm. YouTubers. Yeah. Um, was, was raving about it. Rob, Rob says, get El Murray booked for this year's Flory Fest. Is there a... Is there a, a, a... What's you the budget like? Guess for, slot. Yeah. yeah what's, what's the budget like for and uh, getting? Yeah. yeah. Celebrity guess. guests. Mind you, we saw pictures of him at the Imperial War Museum, wasn't it? Mm. When we were up at Duxford, they had something that he'd done or been involved with. If he could come, he could come to the studio live, couldn't he? Then what would it, what would yeah. his payment be? A cup of tea yeah. and some hobnob. I could do him a, a baguette. I could do him a baguette. Baguette. <laughs> Cheese baguette. <laughs> That's it. Sold. Yes, I'm sure he might cost a, a few squid. Although he does owe me for a set of washes, I'm just saying. <laughs> Bitcoin's gone. Bitcoin is gone as the US are allowing. EFT index funds it in it. Oh, right. Okay. Is that why it's gone up? My son got some, for his 21st birthday, got some money from family and whatever. And he did what all 21-year-olds 20, do. Mm -hmm. He's invested it in shares. Fair enough. I'd have absolutely blown it and I would have yeah, yeah, drunk too. it, if, to be honest. Yeah. Would, Kids that, today have got no hope, have they? Yeah, I wouldn't have any of it left at all today. It's... No. No, at all. <laughs> all my mates would have helped me spend that. <laughs> I'd, have had, I'd have had a new car. Yeah. <laughs> tell you, yeah, hey, just, what's the world it? coming to? I know. Just doesn't sound <laughs> right, does it? Well, the book, no. I'd have booked an holiday to me at um, Magalove or something. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> And his own friend to me asking for advice on what to invest it in. And I'm thinking, oh, no, I'm not going to Scooby Doo even what mm. at yeah. all. Yeah. Right. Do you want to look at your barrels? Yeah. Let's have a look at your barrels close up. That's not close. There's dog up. hair in it. Look at that dog hair running straight across. Have they been washed. Have they been washed and cured, or They're just washed? I haven't cured them yet. I don't know how I'm going to cure them. To be honest. I might just leave them out in the sun like this and, you, and then hey, pop them um, Pen on it, the light. The light pen. 
I yeah. could do actually. Hold on. Yeah, put a light panel on them. Hold on. Let me get the big powerful one. That's where the one that plugs in the mains. Uh, where is it? Hold on, I've got to find it. What have I done with it? This is where someone who's watching somewhere. now gets. Why? Why don't you stick them on your sunbed? <laughs> yeah, I don't have a, a Dickinson look. <laughs> that, that's what you need. You're going to that age, mate, where you need to be orange. Yeah, that's it. Paint yourself orange. It's fine. <laughs> right. Okay, hold on. So this is where everyone that's watching is going to get snow blind now because we've got. It's going to reflect off his. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put your shades on, everybody. Right. Hold on. Hold on. It's complicated now. I've got to do this because. The plug's if, not very long. If you can find it. Right, hold on. Switching on. Brace yourself, everyone. Is that the big one? This is the one that attaches to the the actual unit. All right. Ooh, plugs ooh, in. Oh, look, that. look, that's clever, isn't it? That looks posh. That's a beautiful purple light. Ooh. How long do I need to do it for? Half on an hour. Scale. A couple of minutes, I'd have thought. If you each, it, each one. I'm gonna say just, just do over over one at a time. Okay, I'm working through slowly. To be honest, they look really, really nice. This would be the thing. The camera will not do us justice. I tell you. You can, you can run around the floor afterwards. See if the dogs peed anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why is my lap covered in something? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> <laughs> oh god <laughs> you lot are wrong so wrong <laughs> Yoss says Phil would love to order three four regular flory washers mainly for sci-fi Star Wars Blade Runner is grime more of a Warhammer side of colours any recommendations recommend it dark dirt clearly, because that is literally 99% of everything I use is dark dirt, jack of all trades. Then after that, the grime colour, because it's a really nice earthy colour, um, you know, right the way through. So if you wanted like earthy colours, technically you've got dark dirt, brown and grime. Between them, you can make up any type of earth you want. Um, but again, if you're doing more sort of sci-fi things, you might want to go with a black, because a black works really well uh, for really bringing out stuff to life. You know? what, about, what about dust? And again, dust is a really nice one. Because you can, don't forget, you can mix any of the colours together and just mix them together and then you can do anything with it then. So, you know, you can just get any particular shade or anything you want. Can't believe that bloody dog here in there. So. Any decals for the bombs, Phil? I don't think there is. No, unfortunately not. So what oh. I'm probably going to do is just I'm going to dry brush them. But to be honest, you can't see anything at all. When they're in, you can only see two. About to say, you don't get to see them anyway, they're underneath. Yeah. Well, you can't even see them even in the bomb bay because they stack on top of each other. Oh, so shame. you're only going to see two of them anyway. Then any chance of a um, tease of your next build? Well, the next build is going to be the Apache, the proper one. And also I'm working on a big uh, studio scale Y-Wing. In fact, it's a little bigger than studio scale, I think, which I'll tease you in a minute with. Because I've got some of it here. Have you got all the bits for that now? Yeah, it's all done. And it's all been cleaned up and everything now as well. So oh, it's cool. ready to go. Just needs assembly and then painting. My um, two bosses I'm building that are in bits still. And I need a rotary sander like you've got. Bench sander. Yeah, big bench sander. Yeah. yeah. Get one yeah. ordered. Yeah. That, that, look at that. I know you what, guys can't probably the, see the detail on this. It's a lovely blade. <laughs> You're going to have to zoom in a bit. Can't I see know, it. but I don't, I honestly don't think the camera can go that close. Let me try. Extreme close up. I can kind of see it. It's not open grey, and but have you got a black background. Have you got something black you can put it behind. Oh, yeah, that would be really. You can just about pick out the, actually, uh, the yeah. ball in. Beats yeah. brass ones, doesn't it? Oh, I think that's all right. I think that's going to work. Hold on. Uh, I agree. With but it's certainly, cheap, certainly cheaper than brass ones. 
Well, yeah. How long, 36 how quid long, cheaper. How long did that take to print? Uh, an hour. All right, well, there you go then, is it? So, yeah. But you can probably see, catch it in the light, the, the porting on it's quite good. I'd say it's probably the, the maximum we can sort of do with this. These have not collapsed, rescaling no, it, no. so that's good. But yeah, I don't know if the camera can quite pick it up, but they are hollow, down to a length anyway. Yeah. So, but yeah, no, that's actually worked a lot better than I thought. I thought it was going to come back and somewhat bite me a little bit. But no. Looking it's good. All right. Hmm. I'm happy with that. It saved me 36 quid <laughs> and it was a free far. There you go. Bit of resin, bit of electric. Happy days. Yeah, that's it. No, it worked a treat. <laughs> so, so, yes. So getting them off of here is going to be the hardest part. Oh, well, there's my uh, trusty spatula. Here it is. I thought you'd just do it with that little razor blade thing you're using. Yeah, but I don't want to score too much the thing. I'm hopeful that this will just... Oh, there you go. Ping! They fly off. <laughs> Get ready to catch. See, look, works a treat. <laughs> if you can stop them from... There we go. Does anybody need... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't say that. <laughs> you get like... There you go. Right, let me pop this back in my 3D printer because the other day I printed something and forgot to put it in. <laughs> so I yeah. printed onto my magnetic plate. Are you back on thingy resin? Um, proper resin? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not on the water it... stuff anymore. No, um, the one where we couldn't get for ages, the three kilogram one. Yes. Four yeah. kilograms, whichever one it was, I can't remember. Three kilos, yeah. Is, is it the JJ Lou stuff or the Sun? JO. JO, that's the stuff. Oh, no, no, I've got a new one here because I bought two. I've got six kilos of it here. All oh, right, okay. Yeah, that's the one you want. JO, good resin, that's it. It is really good stuff, isn't it? Yeah. It is, I really like it, and it's cheap. Well, cheapish. Not cheap, cheap, but cheaper. Hmm. <clears throat> so yes but I must admit you know we often talk about 3D printing and you know I know a lot of people think it's going to kill the hobby and a lot of people think it's going to be the best thing in it for things like this because the barrels these are way better than the kit ones and uh, it was a free file off the internet dragged it down rescaled it to obviously into 148 scale because these were obviously for I think 135th I think they were so rescaled it to 48 scale and then just printed it off, took an hour. Simple. Can't yeah. go wrong, can you? Gus yeah. says, um, Phil Dust is definitely on my list, as well as Dark Grime. Hope mm -hmm. to hope that covers most of it, but I'll wait till the new EU shop goes like goes online. Well, it is now anyway. If you can, you can just click on the go to where it's got the you know, I'll show you. All right, right, okay, where are we? Um so we don't want that either. Right, so, <laughs> so just click on here just go into the normal store click in here and it will take you over <clears throat> and you can go straight through all right but if you're using the members discount and all things like that because obviously it's all down in here if you just click on here this is taking your cut at the moment it's just in amongst um Reveco's website because obviously Corrine owns Reveco so as well as obviously she's running four models of you so it's down in there for the moment, but you can just go in and buy there, or you say you can just come along to the Rory store, buy it in here, and then, but it will still be shipped from inside the EU. So, because I'll send the order over to Corrine and she'll ship it out for you. So you can just do it like that. <clears throat> Deadpool, just repost your question, mate. I didn't, don't, didn't see it at all. No. Uh, do, do, do. Adam says, how long for the barrels are up on the website? <laughs> <I'll tell> you, <laughs> 30 minutes after the show finishes. <laughs> yeah. 
Thing is, I made a schoolboy error there. I should have left them and painted them in situ, but then I've got to clean the base plate, so it'd be all right. But it's all right. All cool. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Are you looking forward to starting that patty, aren't you? Yes, it would be nice, I must admit. It's a nice kit. I prefer it over the uh, Tacken one. I think. It's not that much in them, though, is there? Not no, that no, much. there's nothing really in it. But yeah, no, it'd be nice on that one. So, so you literally not adding anything to that? I am going to put a Quinter cockpit set into it, but the entire right. the inside of the cockpit is black anyway. Everyone's like, yeah. "Oh, there's no color callouts." It's black, literally. Mm. Everything's the same color. So, uh, but yeah, so I'll probably just use like XF eighty five on the interior, dry brush it with a metalizer, uh, and all the rest of it. So, if you're doing it powered down, you don't even need the Quinter set. You can just pick it all out by hand, I think. But uh, might give it a little bit of movement. Have the windows, you know, the doors open onto it. I'll probably have the side bays down as well to show it because it's got some nice got some details figures. in there. Um, they do do figures for it. Have you seen them? They do the crew. Somebody does the crew for them. Looks quite they nice. Mm. Yeah, so, they do. Yeah. Hmm. They figured out how you're going to make it look interesting. Well, in weather to hell. That's how it's gonna... I know. Well, you do have to weather them in properly because... Again, you see the colour and it's just one of those weird colours because it's stained Horrible. to hell. Yes. It's, you know, because we saw one, didn't we, when we went up to Dax. They yeah. They landed one yeah. in the car park. So it was like, you know, did it say it's completely weathered to hell and black and yeah. horrible dark green. And yeah, so that's the plan with that one. So again, it's all going to be about the weathering and the painting really to make it come to life. Otherwise, it's going to be pretty boring because it's just... That's the problem. Yeah, that colour yeah. Just an horrible shade of green, isn't it? It's mm. a bit like the old um, sea blue, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's... yeah. You need to do something with it, otherwise it just doesn't look right. So, yeah. <coughs> but yeah, it's doing the right thing with it though as well, isn't it? You know what I mean? Mm. But yeah, interesting. Again, what I'd like to do with that is a little diorama base for it though. Something. Okay. Definitely, yeah. we're going to put it on some crap and dusty <laughs> environment and that to tie it into it. And but yeah. I think that's the trouble with helicopters. They need to be on something. I've come to the conclusion with planes, sometimes you can get away with, although they look a lot better on a base. But there's definitely want to do a base for that one. And also, I still want to do a generic one yeah. for shooting on as well. So like that B-25, have something where it can just sit onto it. So I've got that nice big bit over here, which I've earmarked for it, which is... I want to make it that big. Yeah. So then things like this can sit on it. Just for you know, for photos and stuff, yeah, just to yeah, get a yeah. bit more of a nice look. But I want to do a generic type base, which everything can sort it. of sit on. A generic, just runway. Well, even if it's not even have to be runway, but it's just something. Even if it's like maybe a hard standing with a bit of grass, or as you say, you could just do something. Or I was thinking like the Apache, because it would probably have to be about this big for the Apache to go onto it. Mm. But this would just be sort of just crappy, dusty, maybe some K-bar around it, like a little bit of a revetment maybe, or just something else like that. Obviously, I need something for height after I've now been to the school of uh, ball. <laughs> school of height. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I need my height thing. And be... is, um, do what we did when we did the ta uh, Tempest and just look on the internet and you'll... Yeah, know, yeah. It always does. You'll just go, oh, that looks really... i tell you what, I've got a lot of Phil you could have, actually, because I bought it. Um, mm. You know the... Hess are they like Hessian field men do them. I've got yeah, loads. I've got them somewhere. Did I give them to you? Yeah, the I've, um I've got baskets. a load of baskets, yeah. Do you know, yeah, the baskets that fill because I was gonna use them for the Wimmick diorama yeah. and then obviously I got um the RT diorama base and changed all that mm. completely. But they'd look, you could probably use them. They won't look bad as a backdrop. Mm. I think I've got some con I, 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 they wouldn't be used, but you no know, the concrete slab things, you know, like the Barrier, yeah. concrete, I can't think what they're called. I don't think I've got any here, to be honest. Hold on, let me have a look in my drawer of crap, because there's all sorts mm -hmm. of <laughs> drawer of crap. But I think I've sent, did I send you up those some. baskets? Yeah, look, them. Oh, yeah, the wall. K, yeah, K-bar stuff, isn't it, they call yeah, it? I've got, so I could send you, I've got some of that. Yeah, Phil yeah. has some Meng, did Phil have some Meng ones, the resin ones? Yeah. This is Meng. These are Meng. They're quite called? nice, they're well textured, mm. and so look cool with a nice paint job. Mm. Uh, I've got hundreds of the things because that's what I was going to use for the Wimmick actually. It was them. Mm. 
And then obviously that did materialise you somewhere else. But uh, yes, interesting. Oh, right. Okay, okay. we well, don't worry, uh, Jos. Just hang fire and we'll get it all sorted for you. It'd be fine. But yeah, dust. I would say your colours. I would go dark dirt and then obviously go for grime and dust out of those three. Because the black's okay, but the black's really strong. Sci-fi, you can get away for it, but everything else is a bit, yeah. You could do the uh, flory rendering technique with it. You could, yes. <laughs> Whether we, but I knew we ended up calling it. <laughs> <laughs> what was yeah. that acronym it came up with, like crap or something? Crap wasn't it? or something. Or flat flat something. Or that <laughs> so yeah. yeah, it's called the crap technique or something, where somebody <laughs> did a thing for us, wasn't it? That was good, that was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fart. Oh, that was it. That was fart. Fart, fart was it. technique. Oh, Using the fart it. technique. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. <laughs> That's a t-shirt, don't we? Yeah, definitely. Got to use the fart technique. Uh, has anyone used the ammo uh, Mig Atom colours yet? No, we me and you were on about that, really, weren't we? It's one of them. <laughs> yeah. We might might have to try it at some point. Andy will get some and we can try it. Andy get some. Because you ain't got enough paint. That's it. It's the Flory Advanced Rendering Technique. Fart. That's, that's it. That's Write it. that down. That's, we need that. We, I'm going to put that on the website. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. So, Josh, <laughs> you're saying you don't speak Dutch then? I did wonder all of that, but I didn't want to go down that route. I thought, surely it's, yeah, never mind. It's completely Oh, yeah, pick me the Y-Wing. Yes, hold on, let me get it. <laughs> surely everyone speaks Dutch, surely. They're fluent, fluent in Dutch. Isn't it Flemish as well we were working out the other day, Matt? The Flemish, and the bit, don't they speak Belgium as well, and French, and be a bit of everything, <laughs> don't they? Right, right. where should we start? So... Hold on, let me move my guns before they blow away. Literally, Boy, boy gust Steve. of wind. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Tell you what, this is version two, which I hollowed them out. Originally, it printed them solid, so much lighter. <laughs> so that's the uh, advantage of living on an island, you see. Once we figured out how to stop them coming across the channel, how, what you need is sharks with to lasers. That yeah, how of them. got mixed together, didn't we? And then it all became English, so it's always stayed English. But apart from, you know, we've forgotten the ability to have to stop it now. Right, there is a few other bits as well. Right, some assembly required to this, but these are the bigger bits. So we've got down in half. That's still wet. Did you scale that down, Phil? Uh, this is scaled down, yes. Yeah, because it was massive, wasn't it, the original? Because, yes, originally it was a bit big. So, because um, again, do you want the big version? So I scaled this back a bit to more sort of studio scale size uh, and everything else. So, yeah. This is so what, what scale was that then, roughly? Well, I haven't really worked it out because I just told to do it at half scale. So this is oh. half the scale of what it should be. So... But yeah, so this is your Y-wing. So you've got your various parts down here. If I remember, this bit will plug in the back down in here. And then obviously we've got something else goes on down in here somewhere, wherever it is, one of the others. And then, as you say, I think that's the underside, I think, actually. Then this is the top side. It's all a bit weird how this thing all goes together. Uh, but yeah, so it's really very, very nice. This is all 3D printed. And again, you've got these bits, which are the wings. So what I've done is I've made some slight changes just down to in here because originally it was uh, different scaling to what I had. So, yeah, so consequently I've gone in. So we've got some tubular metal, which I've got now, which then fits down in here. So it just gives it a lot more strength. I think I've got the wrong sides there. There we go. So, yes. So we've got these, which will go in. This is the wingy bits. Just while you're doing so, that, Phil, uh, Adam says, you can, can you still do the 24 scale Harrier seats? No. Um, unfortunately, I the, the seat wasn't mine. It was licensed. 
and the person who's got the license didn't want to relicense it to us. I did ask and begged and pleaded, but unfortunately he doesn't want to do it, but he doesn't do it in 24th scale. So consequently, it's a little bit of a, uh, an issue. So can't really do it, I'm afraid. Otherwise we'll get into trouble for copyright and stuff. So I can do the nozzles because that's our own design, but that's about it. So yes, so we got these and then obviously we got these are gonna go on the front. Once it's done, that one needs to be sanded off yet because I did that one wrong. So again, this one just needs to be sanded flat. Should have printed them flat on there, but I needed a hollow in the bottom. So I had to put it on legs to get the resin out of it. So, but yeah, so they will go onto the front here like this when it's all skirt sanded and flushed out and all the rest of it. It's all a little bit of a squeaky fit at the moment. He's the good sort of pushing and going, bit of cleaning, usual things. But yeah, this will be uh, how this one goes. There's cockpit. Oh. Cockpit, hold on, cockpit. <laughs> hold on, so that's your canopy, which luckily it's flat. So I probably won't put the glass in it anyway, but you can obviously put acetate in there and do the canopy. And then you've got, uh, where are we? Where's the cockpit? It's here somewhere. Hold on. It's in amongst all my bits. Uh, that's the tub, cockpit tub. Where's the instrument panel? Hold on, I'll put my glasses on, I can see it. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, I've got another canopy, so you can have a one piece canopy and have it like that for closed, or you've got three piece canopy like this if you're going to have it open. So that's quite cool. Are you going to put glass? Are you going to leave it like this? Well, I probably was just going to leave it clear. So we've got the seat. That's your seat for him. I've done the instrument panel. I've got it here somewhere. Oh, there we go. Uh, that's the bottom so that's the bit that will come in and fit in here that's the bottom bit and then where is the instrument panel I had it here you've been watching Adam Savage videos the recent videos he's been doing of the auction that's coming up no what the prop store ones yeah prop store one yeah it's got lots of um Blade Runner and Star Wars stuff on there yeah I could actually. No, I haven't. I must admit, I haven't seen it. What did I do? I've got that that'll be cheap. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. I know, it isn't it C3PO's head? He's on it. And, yeah, and, and yeah, original from the second film, I think it was. Hmm. It's still, still got all the original weathering on it, which apparently is very rare because they used to reuse them and take all the weathering off. And Yeah. I don't know what I've done with it. I can't bloody see it now, but I've got the internet panel here somewhere. You know, but the other day. Yossi yeah, hasn't box got somewhere. A, yeah, Yossi hasn't got a scale because it was hey, scaled yeah. down from the yeah, original massive. thing, wasn't it? What would it have so been? the original one apparently was around about 148 scale. So this is not that far off of that, I don't think. This is going to be a little bit bigger than 48 scale, I think. I thought you said it was about 35th scale, that one. Yeah, I think this one's going to be about 35th scale, I reckon, or, from what I've give done. Or, yeah. Give or take. Give or take, roughly in the ballpark of that, yeah. So. Because the original yeah. firework, I say, was about one tenth of something, weren't it? Yes. Or one twelfth, something. It was massive. It's <laughs> huge, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Nice that's now out. The... Ah, there's a cockpit. There's your cockpit. So, it needs all a little bit of fettling because it's resin, but. It, uh, I don't know what I've done with the instrument panel though, because I did have that here earlier, because I did sort of mock it up all a little bit. But that's that's going to take over from your uh, Star Destroyer as your favourite film. Yes, it probably <laughs> will. And also I've got all the plumbing, I've got all the piping done for it as well, which is an absolute nightmare because it's all like this. So we've done all of them. So yeah. Is there any good the only thing I am going to change, I've got these which I've printed off, but you can see they've all warped and that. So. Oh, yeah. I'm probably going to switch it out for doing it in plastic card because these are just little triangle sets. Um, right. So we can do that again in plastic card, which I think will be a lot better. So. Mm. Have you found any good Star Destroyer files? Yeah, there's a couple of actually quite nice ones on there. So, but again, it's one of those. It's it's figuring out what is a good one and what's not, if you know what I mean. Because there's lots of crap on yeah, there and some really nice ones but you can't really tell until you scale it to what scale you want so yes that's always been the problem 
So, but no, this is it. This is what we'll be going through and doing and all the rest of it. So, again, it's uh, that's it. So that one's that one. So this one comes together like this. So that's the bottom. So it's actually got a pole for mounting it straight in. And then obviously onto here, then you've got, I think it's, that's the back. So this comes along into here. This will go down onto here, take that one off. Then this bit comes in here, one of the other ways. And again, it's all a bit of a squeeze at the moment, but there we go. So that's going to be the back of it. Then we've got a collar thing that goes in here, which is a square bit, which is somewhere else. And then we've got, I think it's this bit, then comes in and goes in like that. Then we've got this section. I think it comes in something like that will be on the back of it. And then obviously you've got your wingy bits coming off, which will roughly be something like that. <coughs> Bloody great engines, which is that and that, which will sit on it. So yes, it's going to be quite a beast mm. once it's all together and done. <coughs> That one goes on there, so that'll sit there like that. And that goes on there like that somehow. And these will come in here. There you go. Dry mock up. And you've got that and that. You're gonna be in here like that. This little guy will be around here like that. So yeah, then you've got leggy things, and then they say you've got nozzles and all the bits and pieces which are gonna come off the back. Uh, and again, there you go, canopy will go on so yeah it is going to be quite big i think once it's all done this thing's going to be roughly around about i don't know i think it's going to be somewhere around about 50 55 centimeters once it's done so hmm. tiny tiny and obviously you've got these bits and when they're together there's all plates go on the side of these which are obviously all this type of texture as well right the way over it and i've got a little rtd2 for it as well oh, okay. so yes you get your little droid so, We've got no pilot. Yeah. No, you don't get a pilot, admittedly. You get the big cannons, though, for the underside. Oh, okay. So, you can go get a pilot, innit? Yeah, no, you don't get a pilot. But I'm sure if you go on the internet, you can get one. I'm sure you can find one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so hmm. cool. How much, how much resin did it take to produce that map, uh, Phil? I... Honestly, I don't know, like as Andy probably knows, it's really difficult to work out because you can't take any notice of what it says because that's just a lie. It turns out you can put in the sit into the software and it'll tell you how much it's used and how much it, and I think that's rubbish because mm -hmm. it doesn't seem to work like that. But realistically, obviously this is hollow printed. The first one I did, which is this one is solid. It's which I thought, ah, so after that we hollowed it all out. So all of these structures are hollow now which originally they were all solid, which was a little bit of a mistake on my part. So uh, anyway, we sorted them out and got them done now. But, I've been uh, printing off Blade Runner blaster parts. There you go. Loads of them. <laughs> I need to get back onto that because I keep getting out of it. But yes, but, loads of bits. But realistically, I reckon with this, if you were doing it, you've probably used, I don't know, all in with the supports and everything in there. I don't know maybe a kilo of resin i reckon which is what 15 quid to, to be honest like even, if, it, quid. even yeah. if it's a couple of kilos which it isn't but do you know what i mean it's still quite a cheap thing for what it oh, is it's very cheap all right yeah. you've got electric to go on it obviously if your printer running for hours and hours and hours on end and stuff there is a cost to it but actually if hmm. you was to buy that as a garage kit yeah you're looking that would well, be cheap. again, yeah. I've got, you know, just for the argument's sake here, I've got here a very special X-Wing, which unfortunately is no longer anymore because the gentleman who did it died. And this is just a resin one, mm. and it's huge. This is the big studio scale one, which is done, which I've never built, which is all very nice and all the rest of it. But I paid like 400 quid for this. Yeah. So, you know, and it is a beautifully done thing. But as you say, it's a hell of a lot of money. Cool. A lot of I mean that one you've got there. Obviously, it's scaled to to what it was originally. But again, you mm. could scale that to whatever suits your needs, yeah. really, can't you? Like you've yeah. done, with, like you've done with the um, the the, uh, the the guns. The guns, you know, yeah. Well, yeah. 35th, and you've downscaled them, or you could upscale them to thirty second, or mm. 
Yeah. Because this thing originally, I think it's like three feet. It's massive. It's like this big. Can't even see yeah, on the screen. It's literally that big. It's huge monster thing. So I've halved it at the moment and gone in size. But also on the file, he's also done another file with it in one piece, and you can do it in seventy second, which I've got yeah. a seventy second one because I've got the Bandai one. But you yeah, can yeah, print yeah. it in one on the standing it up as a one er and do it as a one piece in seventy second scale as well. So you got the cost of the file, which is around about seventy five dollars. I paid so I've got this one and the uh, B wing and the A wing. All right, got so. So I got all yes. three because it was a package yeah, yeah. deal. They did it as a deal. Originally, you could just buy this one. Then you could have this and the B-Wing. And then he's done another one, which was before Christmas when I got it. And it was on a special. And it was like all three files. So I've got an A-Wing, the B-Wing, and the Y-Wing. And again, you can just scale them in the software. You literally just put it in what scale you want it to be uh, or size. And you can literally just go for it and then just print it off. So, That's the yes. Cool thing, hmm. And again, the thing is, is like somebody else said to me the other day about, oh, what, you got a failed print and stuff. Don't forget, you ain't got to print the entire thing. You can just take each individual part and just reprint yeah. it. So if you made a hash of, say, I don't know, one of the engines, you haven't got to print the entire thing again. You just reprint that one part. And even if you break one of the small parts, which is great. So say you broke the canopy, for instance, you think, or, you know, something just went wrong. You trod on it or something. You just reprint that one part. And that's the nice thing to do in 3D yeah. printing stuff as well. You don't have to do everything. Just reprint the actual part. And sometimes That's I do it. I'll do spares. Like the guns, I only yeah. need whatever. Was it 12? But I've done 20, so I've got some spares. So, you know. That's, that's what I did on my blaster. So, like, yeah, a few bits didn't come out right. So you, you just get the file again, reprint that that part off, which is mm. why I've got so many parts. And I had them all separated, put them on top of my um, compressor and had my compressor running when I was on with Matt and Nathan and John one day. And it fell off the, because uh, of the vibrator and the compressor, it all fell off them. <laughs> Ended up on the floor all mixed up, so it's still all mixed up. <laughs> mm. And I had it all sorted out, so, yeah. But, yeah. But, anyway, am I planning on doing the Blade Runner spinner? Yes, I am. But I might just wait until some bits come out for it, like someone does a light set or something, because I think it needs it. It'd be really nice if it was lit up and had a bit of, again, little diorama base for that one. Clearly, it'd have to be wet. Yeah. Obviously wet. <laughs> wet. Wet and dark. Wet and dark and That's moody. A couple of it. neon signs in the background. I think you could do something punk. quite cool with that. Yeah. Yeah. The cyberpunk thing. This will, I'll tell you what, if you do actually look around the internet, there's some really good mm. bases and people's done with that. You know what I mean? And they look really yeah. cool for little dioramas or vignettes, whatever you want to call it. I still mm. think we should do the APC dropship thing. Yes. Yeah. Do the Alien, got and the crack. aliens dropship. Yeah. I've got a cracking file for that and the. Um, car thing whatever it is yes of which but the dropship i found a really 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 good file on the uh, 3d mm. so john potts says uh, no thanks don't like 3d printing yet it's like ev cars it will develop into i mean it's developed a lot in the past few years mm. size wise re resolution wise i think the main biggest step it needs now is speed wise I think it's mm. getting faster though. That's it's getting faster, faster, but it, yeah, but it is. But I mean, talking like you know, you you could do with printing something. I'm on the wrong. Yeah, sort of like ten inches tall in an hour. Well, actually, Andy, in... you might say that a guy I follow called Ground Effected does massive figures, and I mean yeah. the big. And he's just been sent a printer, and it's printed a big big figure. Yeah. In a couple of hours. Hmm. And how much is a, how much, and how much Oh, is I don't a, know how much the printer is. I've not looked. But one is, it, is, it, is it in a big enclosure with a opening top? I, can't remember, I don't know. I'll have to look relook at his yeah, videos. It's, it's yeah. one of the latest ones. But yeah, he does like Marvel figures and and Batman's and stuff and all that sort of. But really good. And then he paints them, but he prints them off, and they, they are not small. They're big lumps with bases and stuff. Big bases. So yeah, it's. Um, Phil's writing small scale lights down on his panel. He is, yeah. <laughs> I, can tell. I am. <laughs> yes, it's I somebody... definitely am. Thank you, Andrew. I will look it up and I will see. But yes, I am literally writing that down. Otherwise, I, I will saw, forget. I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I've yes, got, so got, anyway. I think just well. <laughs> yeah, just summing up. I think you know, literally, you know, three D printing. Um, at the moment, I'm just, you know, I've got a 3D printer. I've got all the bits going with it and everything else. But I'm not designing my own. I'm literally just printing off what I can find and people send me and stuff like that. But I think it's just, it's one of those things. It's, at the moment, complementing the hobby, you mm. know? 
Um, and I think it's not taking away from it because obviously this is fully 3D printed and I've done a few fully 3D printed things now. Um, but again, I don't think it takes away from modeling because it's a different skill set. Like these parts are together. It's not like it's in four bits, you know? Um, and I can't imagine uh, injection molding doing things this big. You know, so again, if you want to do it, then 3D printing is definitely the way. And obviously, there's lots of people will sell you these kits all printed for you just to put together yourself. So if you wanted to do it, you can go out and do it. The great thing about 3D printing is the ability to scale up and down, though. So again, as long as it's a good quality, you know, been designed really good quality, you can make it to whatever scale you want. So like with this one, technically, it could be a three foot monster or you could do it as probably 144. You could downscale it and just do it like that. It's personal choice on, on exactly what you want. And obviously it gives you the ability to do things that aren't available out there. So there's so much you can get, like a 3D printed Firefox. Still tempted, because no one else does one. No. You know? no. So, yeah. <laughs> and that's the nice thing to it. And like Matt's used a lot for diorama pieces, like you know oh. jerry cans and barrels and just those things as well. So if you're doing a lot of dioramas, just to buy a couple of quid for a file and just print off when you need a load. Well, say if you're deal. doing a, a lorry mm. full of jerry cans, yeah. say, yeah. you just print them off. I've printed about mm. 200 off because we get about 200 yeah. on the plate and printed them all off. So it's yeah. ideal. If you want to sit there and buy in a jerry can set, say, from Tamiya, which are cheap, but you've got mm. to put them all together and whatever. These yeah. are just... You just because again, you, they're there for the effect and not for the actual item, if that makes sense. Because you're only yes. going to sort of see if you stack them or if you put them on mm -hmm. tanks or whatever as accessories. And I think they're brilliant. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I've got uh, that's one thing. To Rob treat. says, just wait for the dot matrix to laser jet leave. I think what I think the one that Matt was talking about took two hours. I think that's actually a laser printer. Mm. Rob, yeah. Rob's using a light source like the normal right. use. I've, I've got a feeling, I'm pretty sure it's got a laser light that moves around to um, cure the resin. Mm. But again, like we said before, it is that thing. If you imagine back when printers first came out, dot matrix printers, you know, zzz, 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 yeah. you know, literally that's what it's doing now. But within a couple of years, you say laser came along and inkjet printers and everything else. And suddenly what used to take 10 minutes to print a print picture now takes seconds. And it will be the same for this as well. And again, it's becoming more and more consumable. And I think the biggest thing as well that worry people have is that it's not plug and play. Now it is, because this is plug and play. I don't play with any settings at all. I'm literally, yep, default, print it. And I very rare do I get failures. You will get failures because that's just part of doing this. But, you know, again, it's one of those, clean up your build plate, get on with it, go again. You know, right. but it's definitely going to be a good thing for the future, I think. This this printer is an any Anycubic M5S Pro. All right. I don't know how hmm. much they are or what they do, but it's in it. Yeah, because I've just looked at the video. Well, hmm. into the video and he printed off a quarter scale statue in less than one day. And it's had a lot of parts. Hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, no, it's that's what it is. But I don't know how much it is. It's not, not not too expensive either. All oh, right. OK, well, there you go then. It's, they're going to get quicker and quicker and quicker, aren't they? Because the you know, yes, just technology moves that fast, doesn't yeah. it? When it comes yeah, to these it things, it's just yeah, you know. So, um, yeah. No, it'll be good. Right, one final look round everything, guys, because we got to go. So, yeah. uh, don't Looks forget in. if you do want to support us and all the rest of it. Um, you know, obviously you can come over to the Florian Model Store. Just literally click on Store down in here. Takes you over down in here, and again, we've got some great deals. If you want to help us out, we've got polo shirts, we've got the t-shirts, we've got the aprons, we've got the hoodies, and we've got the mugs. The mugs are just $7.99 plus that. All right, they're down in there. I have got a few of these, and I will get some more printed uh, over the weekend as well when I'm not on air. All right, so we get those done. Got all your pigments, your washes, your bits and pieces like that. If you are inside the EU, you can go straight over to Flory Models Europe. And uh, if you pop over there, you'll be swiftly taken over to the Braveco website. And obviously you can have them sent directly from Kareen and she'll get them out to you straight away. Literally got the washes, got the thick washes down in there. And also we've got all the other things in various languages as well. So if you want to see any of those, you can do as well. All right, so that's up in there. Over on the PM store, we've got a fantastic discount. So we've got uh, an extra 10% of all kits and books going on at the moment uh, down in there. So we said about that earlier. Obviously on our special section, we've got some great discounts down in there. So if you want to join along and build along with the actual Apache with me, uh, you can do that <laughs> now. Why has that got two prices? Why is it saying 84 and then 47? Oh, right. Okay. Editing. Quick, needs... quick edit that. 
Yeah. <laughs> what which uh, one was it, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good point. So anyway, we got it up at 61.99, so I don't know why those ones are all in there. It's obviously for something else. Sorry. Uh, so anyway, we got in. Also, if you want to have a go at doing the glorious uh, Tiger Moth, highly, highly recommend it. Finish this one uh, this week. Beautiful kit. We've got three different variants up there. I did this one down in here because Matt's done the figures with it. So if you're wondering why the difference in price, this one over here, um, you can literally do it straight out of the box. This particular one here comes with the bombs and the various bits and pieces. This one comes with the figures. So you get four figures with that one. So you get the, the cadets with the officer. Good old chap. Uh, down in there and also we got some of that Hasegao it's left over from a uh, pre-order uh, offer that we had on for the Flory membership so this is the last of it once it's gone it's gone and again if you were looking at the uh, P40 that I did with the motor and the, the sound and everything else this is the kit that I use for it which is the uh, 30 second scale P40E beautiful kit if you want it 48 we've got your back covered as well so we've got one there and obviously all the others you can have Apaches in 70 second or 48 as well there you go so, yes and all your other bits and pieces. Refresh it. Gear. Refresh <laughs> it. All oh, right, shall I try it again? Has it suddenly <laughs> changed? There we go. That's better. It's fine now. <laughs> so uh, before your very eyes, it changes. So uh, but anyway, you've got all your stuff there. Don't forget, we've got all your paints. We've got all your tools. We've got all your accessories, everything else you can need as well. So we've got some Olaf, not as in the oh. snowman, but uh, we've got the Olaf stuff as well. So we've got the blades. Oh, that's that Olaf stuff. Olfa, yes. however you pronounce it. Oh, I pronounce it Olaf, but hey, no, no. I, I can't pronounce English. Yeah. No. So, but yes. yes. So we've got. Look, is that a knife holder? Does it sit on your desk like that? Does it? Stop it no. rolling away into your lap. It's fair. There weren't very good pictures that I could find of any of it. So. Oh right. Okay. I haven't That's really got why that they one. don't fit very well. Yes. Jesus, who cuts a box like that? You do. <laughs> Jesus, that's like proper angry man. Right, you bastard. <laughs> you like so, a yeah, box, and obviously, right? is that safe for you cutting into your power sockets? I don't know. This is Japanese for you, isn't it? So, <laughs> yes, fair enough. That's random. Uh, but anyway, we've got those ones in you now. Know, you remember the old classic Tamiya pea cutter? That's an Olaf. That's what it was, wasn't it, back in the day? That's the original. Yeah. Original the original scribe, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah, the original black one did did say Olaf on it, didn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, it was actually an Olaf one rebranded by Tamiya, wasn't it? So yes, Olaf, Olfa. Is it Olfa? Oh, it's not. It's Olaf. I've been calling it Olaf. 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 It's Olfa. I don't know. Oh no, it's Olaf. It's fine. Olaf. <laughs> we get Olaf from from O L F A. But there you go. <laughs> anyway, we've got all of that down in there. We've got all your tools, various books as well. Don't forget and various areas. So this afternoon, if you've got a couple of minutes, have a look around our stores and uh, go on grab anything and support yeah. us. You Help can support. do that way. If not, give us a like and subscribe and all those things as well. I don't know what it means or does, but you never know. It can't hurt, can it? So yes, <laughs> good job. Right, that's about it from us. I'll be back with you on Monday with part 10 of the B25. That'll be up with you, with guns probably. Uh, now we've got that sorted. And then next week I'm going to be working on this one and we're going to be working on the Apache as well. We'll get going on that uh, and try and get that somewhat together as we make our way through the week. Uh, I'll be back with you on Tuesday with Matt. Will. Uh, so in the afternoon at some point that show will go live as well. And then obviously Andy will be keeping you all up to date with everything via social media. And that yeah. Now we can whatever it was, tag whatever it was. Now we can tag people and we understand how to share things. Yeah, yes, I still, can't, I still can't tag pictures. No. Not unless, okay. not unless I'm allowed a budget. A budget? You need to budget. You know that's, that, that's a swear word in this company. <laughs> <laughs> <Don't you? laughs> uh, a budget? budget. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sure there's a free version somewhere. Right. <laughs> okay then guys thank you very much for joining us today it's been an absolute pleasure as always we'll see you all again very very soon say goodbye gentlemen we're out of here goodbye Bye. Bye.